All right. And we are live. The last word, water free edition with, <laughs> <laughs> with Ivantis and Ty Guy Travis. Fresh off of a missed Friday, but we're back. The technical gods have blessed us. First, let us talk to the cheetah, the man of the hour, the man that has survived the most catastrophic failure known to man, but is still with us. How are we doing, sir? I'm here. I have no idea, yeah. honestly, how I'm here, because if you guys knew how what. So a lot of people have seen on Twitter. Some people were on the show. A lot of people who are close enough to me know generally what happened, but. I've got these like basically, you know, type like stainless Be steel water thing. Reenactment. Be yeah, careful. yeah, I know, I know. Okay, Everybody's all touchy. <laughs> They're so far separate right now; it's not an issue. Good, but it holds about like 20, 25 ounces of water, and like the top is basically the biggest part of it, and that's what actually was not on the top of it because I was like making a mix of my advanced UG in the morning, and had everything in there, and the top was not on. So there was no like limitation, no like slight slow of flow, just like the whole it was like a bucket of water was poured on top of my PC <laughs> when I spilled it. Jesus Literally Christ. an open bucket, just whoosh. And the problem is I recently got an, a case to try and help with like airflow. And it's like the Corsair 5000D. Mm -hmm. Great case, by the way. Um, not, not sponsored or anything, but I actually really like the case for airflow. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's open in the top. So it's not like you pour it on the top and it kind of ran down the sides and you got to clean right. it off. It ran through the fans, <laughs> through the radiator, down onto like the motherboard, dripping through the PC, fa through the <laughs> GPU. Fa like it was everywhere. And I was Jesus. just like, there was a point where I thought my monitor like kind of flickered off. And I was like, oh, God, there goes the GPU. And I basically mm -hmm. pulled the power cable out of the back as, yeah. as quick as I kind of realized I could. That was my first reach to try and cut the power. There's still mm -hmm. some residual power at that point. But basically at that point. Like these guys were on the discord call with me because I jumped back in with the phone. I'm over here like ripping parts out of the computer, dismantling it Ugh. as fast as I can. I literally have like isopropyl alcohol. When I got that thing over, like when I got my motherboard out, I'm literally like the whole bottle of isopropyl. I'm spraying my motherboard with isopropyl <laughs> alcohol at this point because wow. I feel like I can't hurt it. <laughs> wow. It was so destroyed. So it was like that, a hairdryer, a whole lot of Q-tips, a toothbrush. Mm. I went through everything. Surgery. Made sure. Surgery. You put it in the ER immediately. Well, I dismantled. This. I have a Founders Edition 3090 and I've dismantled it and actually put like better thermal mm. pads on for the memory, which has actually helped a lot. So I've taken it apart before. So I was like, OK, I, I didn't care at this point. Like I took the heat sinks off the motherboard. I dismantled right. everything. And somehow first thing the test was like the GPU, because I'd actually recently won a new egg shuffle and helped somebody else get a graphics card. And I was like, I know there's a graphics card like in shipment right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can talk to that content creator and see about <laughs> getting it if mine died. So my first priority was my GPU to try and test it. And I have a computer upstairs where um, we have Beat Saber set up. It's a little older computer. Yep. So yep. I have that set up upstairs and I'm the one I played on. That's the one I played on. You probably play, you no, you played Saber downstairs. Down. You and yeah. someone brought it downstairs when I came. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. It was, it was on, <laughs> yeah, it was on my, my good computer at that point. It was just that gotcha. one still works. I moved the GPU up there. Gotcha. Um, so I tested it up there for a little bit and I was like, Hey, you know, told my wife, it's like, Hey, jump into Beat Saber. We'll see if like the GPU put a little stress through it. And it actually <laughs> played well for a little while. And then it went to a green screen. And I was like, oh, God. Oh, so you like, it's done, done. It's done. Yeah, I thought it was done. And mm. but basically what it was, there was enough power for the GPU. Right. Because the power supply up there was like 750. This it. one's like a yep. thousand. So it was just like it ran for a little while, would always sit in Windows. But then it mm. just wasn't enough for the. But at the, that point, you attributed it. It's a possibility that it, yep. it was damaged, not realizing yeah. it could be not be having enough power. Got Pretty it. Pretty much. And then my brother went through Ooh. the same thing because he got like a 3080 and he had an older computer or a smaller G power supply when he got his 3080. And his was like ran for a bit and would turn off. So he had something similar. So I was like kind of going back and forth. I gave the content creator that I'd helped get a GPU like emotional roller coaster hell because I was like, I may need that one. I don't. Maybe I do still. So I was just messing with her even more. Um, but all somehow between the cleaning, the dismantling, lots of toothbrushing and alcohol, Q-tips and everything else. And I think I've got like I've re thermal pasted everything recently. So it's all fresh nice. and clean nice. and somehow working at this point. Um, no, Friday was Friday morning and it was Cognito and Travis saw me on the call and Tom was nice enough to stand up for a little bit, but he had to run. But like all of them saw my face and later yeah. I talked to Cognito and he was just like, dude, I like. Yeah, I basically just 
thought it I died. So yeah, your life flashed before your eyes. The, 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 the IT gods have blessed you. You have a second leaf on life. So we're happy to have you back in the world of living computers. You gave us a scare. Me and Travis stayed on the call. We were just like, man. I hope that thing come back. They, you know what I'm saying? Like we would, we would just like pray for the worst. If anybody, I mean, not the worst, yeah. the best. If anybody knew yeah. how much water actually went in there, you yeah. would never have. Get, I mean, I'm sitting there pulling the GP out of the socket. There's fluid dripping through this PCI socket. Like nothing should work right now, and somehow it does. So it's like no thank, these parts are apparently a little beastly because they all survived. So. No doubt. So, Chad, have anything to uh, compete with this? For, for your <laughs> I hope friend? not, man. I hope it's been Before we get into our esteemed guest. <laughs> I mean, am I allowed to heckle him? How much time do we have? Uh, we got to be respectful. Was, We're a little, little heckle I, I will, is okay. I will say, I'm, I'm amazed at his ability to turn that uh, technical catastrophe into another ad for Advanced GG. That's yes, yes. Active. Salute to that. Yes, uh, yes, yes. I think that's really important. Um, he should shout out the alcohol company, too. That's what some I Some joke about the last word campfire almost being extinguished. <laughs> Uh, a bucket of water. Um, maybe we should rename this the Splash Zone Cog. You and I are sitting in the Splash Zone of the, the podcast. Splash Zone. I don't know. I, I could go on, but it sounds, like, it sounds like it sounds like you've been thinking on these for a while. I mean, I like I kind of like we joked about that, and I basically even I mean, my chat when I was actually able to stream for a little bit. Besides the fact that my AC went out the same day that happened, by the way. Jesus. My AC was out for like the entire weekend after that. That finally got fixed on Monday. They wanted to make you sweat, E. They wanted to make <laughs> yeah, you sweat. Literally. <laughs> I had no problem with that. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's been quite a thing. What have you been up to, Cog? <laughs> Since Not I was much, the one man. with all just, the entertainment. <laughs> I, I've been good, brother. Just busy. You know, obviously Defining Duke and Lords of Gaming.net and ILP and all that good stuff. Just, you know, making the rounds, doing stuff. I will plug something as we as we start. Um, if you guys can, if you see pinned on my Twitter account at Lord Cognito, please. Uh, one of our destiny brothers, man, he uh, is going, going through a rough year. And I have to shout him out. You've heard me probably mention the name Sinister often on this podcast. He's always, if you've played Destiny <laughs> with me or anybody in ILP clan, He's always he's either raided with you or helped you get something done. So yeah, sadly he lost his mom uh, yesterday, and uh, this year has been a rough year. He also lost his dad and grandma to COVID nineteen yes. complications. So um, we're trying to do something special for him. If you get a chance, and if you again out of the kindness and generosity of your heart, you want to help our brother, we're trying to raise something to you kind of funeral arrangements and, and send off the family right. So salute to Sinister. I love you, bro. He listens all the time. Big fan, and uh, we know you're going through it. You know you're hurting, but we're going to try to rally for you so that responsibility is not all on you. So salute to Lord Sinister, my guy. Sorry to make it somber. Sorry. No, no. Way to bring <laughs> it back to reality after my yeah. idiocy. So thank you. No doubt. No doubt. That being said, we have a guest to bring into the show, and he's been patient yes. enough to wait through my stupid Very story. Very um, <laughs> So... Let's do this you the only way we... week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just remember when I was on in the pre-show and I just said, put it in rice. And I didn't yeah. know it was that bad. So. <laughs> All right, let's do this let's intro, how we do this. Welcome to The Last Word, episode 168. We got a break from Trials of Osiris as Lord Saladin, who is long overdue for an update, by the way. Grace the Tower for another week of Iron Banner bounties. The Helm has kept things spicy as we got to see the dreaded conversation between a bird and a crystal take place firsthand. <laughs> and we got our final chat with a god as well. With increased difficulty on the horizon and a first series of trials experiments in the rear view, we are lucky enough to be joined by an extremely distinguished guest around the campfire today to discuss this crossroads in Season of the Lost. Our guest today has always had a talent for using his words, and there is a lawsuit from his teen years to prove it. As with many forms of technology, he always has been ahead of his time. His passion for tech made his initial career choice a likely one. That wasn't enough, though. Working double time to stay ahead of the curve, he built his own community, focused around all things Microsoft, and it rocketed into the stratosphere. The watchful eyes of the internet noticed his talents, and The Verge was the winner of this man's silver pin. From GoldenEye as a young lad to Windows IT as an adult, you could say he was destined to end up where he is now. With, a new, with his new puppy Frank by his side and getting his lunch delivered from Mars, his home in the United Kingdom seems to fit him rather well. And while, a new, while new technology is never too far away, neither, his cam neither is his camera phone. Go check out this, world's, this man's world traveler's Instagram. Seriously, hashtag jealous. He may not technically hold the title of Lord or Earl, 
But anyone who knows his career wouldn't argue that he deserves something like that because in the world of technology and gaming journalism, our guest today is part of Wordsmith Royalty. We will check with Lord Cognito after the show to see if we could work on at least an honorary elevation to Duke. So let's welcome to the campfire the founder of Wind Rumors and now senior editor at The Verge with over 5,000 articles and counting, a man who has appeared on nearly every major global news network, the one, the only, Tom Warren, sir. How are you doing? Hey. Wow, what an intro. <laughs> I feel way more important than, than I think I am. <laughs> like <that intro. laughs> but yeah, hello. Uh, yeah, so I've, I've been a Destiny fan and I've played Destiny since the alpha. So I, uh, I've i played way too many. I think I have 5,000 hours in Destiny 2, which nice. is which is kind of, yeah. So yeah, I'm a huge Destiny player. You need so to pump it's, up it's those numbers, to... bro. Those are rookie numbers. <laughs> those are rookie numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I need 10K. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get to take it, um, but yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm. I love to be here and talk. I don't talk about Destiny enough. Like I tweet about it sometimes, and you know. But like, is this your first Destiny show? Have you been on other shows? Yeah, I don't. No, I haven't. No. No. Hey, it's word exclusive. Hey, hey, so exclusive. Yes, we got the exclusive. Exclusive. I sometimes right. jump in people's like Twitch streams and say hello. And, oh, it is. Nice. Yeah, ask questions and stuff. But yeah, I haven't actually been on people's shows. So. Yeah, Some of us have yeah. made a whole career out of it. <laughs> just destiny <laughs> what do you do yeah, just it's, one it's, game <laughs> oh no it's such a complex game though isn't it it's so it is good. it is it's very nothing very quite like it so. nothing like it and uh before, i know we got to get into it but i, I definitely you know after e set you up with a, an amazing intro i definitely wanted to get into you know gaming history you know and you got some really really standout titles i saw that golden eye and and stuff mm. like that so like early beginnings as far as console gaming you know what were some of the inspirations that kind of just got you into gaming in general yeah so i had originally i had like a ps2 um back in the day and then mm -hmm. there was like this little local uh store near me that that kind of like imported like consoles and stuff you know when like stuff back then like i'm like 37 oh, mm -hmm. i feel old uh, but back then that's not like, stuff not was that all region locked right so yep. you, you had to like get the specific disc or if you had like a Japanese console, you had to have Japanese games and like oh, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Um, and I just remember taking like, I don't know how many games I had, like 20 or 30 PS2 games and then trading that in for an N64 and coming Ooh. home like with, all, with just well, like one game, you know, Ooh. just the N64 and Goldeneye and my mum mm. being like, what the hell have you done? <laughs> like, why have you traded this in? <laughs> <laughs> and all these games for this one game. Um, and I think that was like, that was probably the start of me like being into games and stuff. Um, mm. So I obviously love, I love the N64, nice. apart from its kind of wacky controller. But, yeah, shout out to the, with the Batarang yeah. with the analog in the center. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. It was made yeah, for nothing, something. Nothing ever made quite like that, is that? Yes. It was made for a three-handed person as far as I can. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and like when I, I played like GoldenEye emulated on the PC like a couple of months ago. And uh, it's, it's so weird like playing that game. Oh, no. you haven't yeah. touched it for years. It is aged yeah. remarkably poorly, I must say. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's impressive. Oh, I'm sure. How bad it's Sadly, I'm sure the graphics that are in my head are still better. By yeah. a huge margin than what it actually is. Because, I mean, you go back and you think like odd job and the shots that you do. You're like, I'm picturing GoldenEye the movie in N64. I'm like... It's kind of trash, but in the moment it was good. <laughs> you know what it was? Yeah. It wasn't even the it wasn't even the graphics for me. It's the I I completely forgot that in Goldeneye you use one analog stick to control mm -hmm. movement and aiming, and that is yeah. not good. It, it, yeah, yeah. It is, that's just rough. Resident Evil Four had the same problem, but it got remastered and they added mm -hmm. like a second stick control. But mm -hmm. damn, man, it's rough. Yeah, it's I, rough. I, I, but I so, okay, so I was I was so into like Goldeneye. Um, yeah, I was gonna ask I remember, you. I remember like speed running all of the stuff, and even like I went to like a, a local like uh, mall that we had, mm -hmm. and they had like this little competition about like if you could speed run it Ooh. over over like they had like a month long thing. So if you were the top speed, you'd win like a golden N sixty four. So wow. I, I I won that and gave oh, it to my damn. sister. Really? <laughs> Ooh, okay. N sixty four. Yeah. So, okay. So that was oh, that you was still cool. have it. You must still have the no, I don't. Gold. Oh man. Oh. Oh. No, I I, I, I I haven't kept like a bunch of my old stuff. Like I don't I think have much of mine either. You kind of like clear stuff out. And, yeah, you know. yeah, I'm not nostalgic at all. As soon as the old generation's gone, I'm like, well, time to get rid of this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm so bad nostalgia. for like keeping keeping old stuff. Yeah. Like I like to just 
and I trash it. Mm-hmm. It's like I have one thing I still wish I had, and that's my Chrono Trigger cartridge. Everything else yeah. I'm probably okay with, but that one is like that's my game. But yeah, it's like yeah. Into, I've always done. Yeah, trade it in typically, even though you get like cents yeah. on the dollar. But I've always just like PS4. Yep, for the Pro. Okay, Pro for mm-hmm. the Five. Yep, just. Mm, you know and absolutely. they make the deals like occasionally GameStop's like we're gonna give you two hundred dollars i'm like what sure yeah. like have it take it i don't <laughs> care you you can go rip yeah. somebody else off for it i'll take two hundred dollars because i got my use out of it so mm-hmm. I, I do I was, have the yeah. uh the 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 hard drive that they had you take out of your n64 with that little plastic tool uh, when you're doing the expansion drive uh, and have, like the old heart of my n64 it's like one of the only relics i have <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, i've got that no, no. I met, met, for my birthday a few years ago my girlfriend like but there's there's a place nearby us in peckham um mm-hmm. i think it's called four quarters or something like that it's like mm-hmm. some really retro thing and she like booked like this whole area where they had like all old n64s and like uh-huh. every, every generation of console and that was that was that's cool. a nice lady it's nice yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta so, keep so her cool. there yeah that's, that's yeah, nice. pretty awesome that's what's up. Um, I, I just want to ask quick before we transition off Golden Hour. You know, mm-hmm. I, I have fa- some family in 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 London, and I'm traveling there, yeah, yeah. and that's how I actually, as a young age, got introduced to like the impact of like James Bond. So mm-hmm. was. GoldenEye in the UK, like, was it like this massive thing because of also the popularity of the series and in general? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Like, it, mm. I think it was just it was like the first of its kind, really, wasn't it? Of its, it was. of its genre, really. So, like, mm-hmm. I think it was that, and it was like the four player. You know, like I, I remember just taking my N sixty four to friends' houses and just doing that split screen multiplayer stuff. And yes. Like it was, it was just so unique. Um, mm-hmm. So I think it was, like, it was definitely a part of the Bond stuff. But okay, yeah, yeah it was like the only good shooter until Combat Evolved, like right. figuring yeah. out how to do console Correct. shooters. Like that yep. was yeah. like, and then and then after Combat Evolved came out, everybody was like, oh yeah, like why aren't shooters just on every? Like <laughs> mm-hmm. it's yeah, perfect yeah. for a controller. Why isn't there, there constantly? But Absolutely. like that, yeah. that that sort of experience, like kind of really kind of got me into. I think the N sixty four was like really. Like the PS2 was like great, and, and I loved all the games there. But the N64 was like kind of the, ah, uh, you know, like that yeah, was yeah. the yeah. thing for me. And then, um, then when I like, I really got into like PCs mm. when I was uh, after that, um, and started like I did some stupid stuff as a teenager. Like I, I, I'd nick my mum's credit card and and <laughs> and, and, and buy PC parts and shit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like, Shout out to Tom out was, here. Uh, did she like was make dick. you return them, <laughs> or was like, did you like receive this package and the credit card bill just kind of went through? No, or? she she uh, she let me keep them, and like I think whoa. she I think my, my parents like basically fostered my like obsession with PCs. And Sounds so, like, like they were like, so well, I was kind of lucky. He didn't buy drugs, so I guess we let him <laughs> <Yeah>. keep this. <laughs> yeah. Our man's out here committing felonies for the love of the game. There was no <laughs> repercussions from this. Yeah, I'm like, my parents were so. I did that. I would be parents too soft on me. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> really? Oh, I got the. I got to get to the Warren household. This is. <laughs> oh, for this is, sure. This is I'd amazing. Be, I'm gonna be like, me so, along the road. So, so I got, that were me. <laughs> so I got really into PCs and like uh-huh. building PCs and. I don't know. Like, I remember we had like a shed in our garden. I don't know if, mm-hmm. what that converts to in. America. Yeah, now that we like, get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we have that. Um, and and it was like it was just full of PC parts and just old PCs and shit. Like we used mm-hmm. to build PCs for like my sister, my mom, and I, yeah. I had like I had the whole thing like a, a server, Active Directory network, Ooh, the whole lot going on. Wow, it was just wow. it was just stupid, really. But um, but that that got me into PC it. gaming, mm-hmm. obviously, um, yes. and Steam and everything else. Um, and particularly return to castle wolfenstein so like Ooh, i was that was my big one so i was in like clans we competed in like they had like an intel gaming okay. tournament in london in the science museum many nice. years ago it was like a very start of like that mm-hmm. sort of thing um mm-hmm. i used to go up to like lan events in nice. manchester and stuff and just drag my pc along oh man nice. those pcs and the monitor that's like the weight of my entire mm-hmm. body as a child like crts oh, yeah. Yeah. oh my god crts i got this like yeah. 19 inch dell crt it was like sort of like this deep and it's just <laughs> you carry that thing around doesn't even fit on the little cart you put it on the card table that's at your friend's lan house and the card table goes <laughs> <laughs> I remember doing like house parties at like when I was like 16, 17. Um, oh and I'd, I'd take my PC to the party. 
which sounds really like that sounds like the most nerdiest thing right now but it was like full of like mp3s and maps so much and stuff, work you know? man I yeah remember yeah. doing land parties was like so much work it was like everybody's tv was huge even if you were yeah. doing like a halo land party which is what i did mm-hmm. the tv was like the biggest thing now that's like the easiest thing monitor yeah. all right easy no, mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah. true so true but that, yeah, return to castle wolfenstein really kicked that that kick that and golden i really kicked off my love for like first person shooters basically that's that's nice. mostly all i play really nice, so, nice. nice. Well, well i dedicate most of my time to that so, so i wanted try. to touch on this like journey through journalism you started a blog when you were probably before you were driving and went through a like a, <laughs> a lawsuit like i gotta know the details on this thing that happened before you even hit like adulthood yeah you've gone through I've a re- lawsuit and a blog and it was so like yeah let what what was that whole story how did that go yeah so i wrote about this um so the blog was times new roman like the font and mm-hmm. so oh, i yeah. registered that domain name the uk version and um i had it for years and i used to just do these stupid blogs saying like how I used to like get drunk at 16 with my mates and like <laughs> I wanted to be famous on the internet. I mean, it's sort of really like if you read what? it now, it's just such cringe, isn't it? Oh, it's I love this. I love this. <laughs> it's so well, funny. It is. Um, mm. And all that sort of stuff. And anyway, like one day I was like, mm, you know what? TimesNewRoman.com, I think the people that own that should be directing traffic to me. So I was like, I penned, I penned off like a quick email to like whoever, I can't remember the, the font company that actually owns Times New Roman. Mm-hmm. Um, but I actually dared to actually email them and be like, yo, I've got the UK domain and like, you should, would you mind adding a backlink <laughs> sort of thing? Oh, and then obviously that, that, alert, <laughs> <laughs> that alerted them to the fact that some 16 year old idiot in the UK had uh, registered their domain name. And uh, so then I got like this legal letter saying, <laughs> you know, like, you, like, we're not going to sue you, but like, we'll give you like 500 pounds for this domain. It was around about that amount of money. Ooh. Um, for this domain name and you know like no questions asked sort of thing so okay. I was like I was uh, one part I was like but my domain and also I was like 500 pound you know that's gonna that's a new graphics card and a new processor there you go point. yeah um, so I was like sure <laughs> respectfully I like this hustle your hustle game is serious bro <laughs> I like <Yeah>. this <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Well, you, you you were 16, so the internet was still the wild west back then, wasn't it? What year? Yeah, was yeah. I mean, if, yeah. When would that have been? Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, was this hosted on GeoCities or MySpace? <laughs> yeah, I, it would have been 2000, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so that was back. So like, was, yeah, like it was I back remember. when it was dial up and all that sort of stuff. Oh, but yeah, was, yeah, that, yeah. That, was, that was back when like teenagers were buying like domain names for like politicians campaigns and then selling yeah, that yeah, to yeah. for a couple of thousand. Like that was like it, crazy. It, you can't, you can't do that anymore. Like that's nah. but that was back when that, that was back when it was so competitive as well. Like I remember there, there would be like AOLs obviously and, and free oh, serve yeah. and all this stuff. Oh yeah. Oh but yeah. And there was like these rogue ones that were like for, for us, like a free dial, like toll free number is 0800. So mm-hmm. there used to be these ones and they'd be like, you can sign on from like 6 p.m. for free all weekend. So I'd be like clicking and my modem was like tr- trying it 50,000 times. It's just not going the, the, through. Which, which was then, rocking? Well, you had the 144, the 336. Okay, what oh, you was doing? What you doing? 20, 28 BPS. <laughs> 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 Ma, get off the phone. Get off the telly. Yeah. <laughs> Mum picks up the phone and like <laughs> suddenly, suddenly your Grand Theft Auto multiplayer session has ended. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. Talk that OG <laughs> talk. I love it. Continue. Yeah. So yeah, like <laughs> that was that was my domain name gone. <laughs> wow. So crazy. Shout out to, but, I just love that it's named after the font Times New Roman. I know. It's amazing. Like, I, I don't know. It's like yeah. Was the, what was the motivation to, for that? <laughs> I don't know why. I think it's just it was the default font in Office at the time. So yeah. I was just like, yep. Let's just go with that. But like my nickname at the time was called Tom One Two Three. So mm-hmm. I obviously was a. A very uninspired, uncreative teenager. <laughs> <laughs> cool Tom, one, two, three. Ah, the originality. <laughs> love yep. it. Love it. Oh, no, no, Trav, uh, you got any questions for Tom? Uh, I guess since now we know how you got into um, shooters, what, what got you into Destiny? How long have you been playing it? And sort of what's been your relationship with it? yeah so i got into i played the beta of destiny because a friend was playing it um and i, I you know I, I thought it was cool and it was like interesting it, there was obviously the grind the loot and the loot caves Boy, was the, there 
Yeah. That, all that stuff was there. Um, but I think what really got me into it, and this is kind of funny, is like I, I think I signed into my Xbox on a Saturday. My friend was in a party and I joined it. And, um, and he, he was like doing a raid. And I was like, what is, what is he doing? Like, what's going on? And they were like, you know, fully intense. And I was like, yo, what's up guys? And they were like, <laughs> yeah, how's this? And, you know, like, in the middle, of, I can't remember what raid it was. It would have been one of the first Destiny raids, but. Um, and, then, and then like he, he said, oh, look, this is in the game, all the raids and stuff. And I was like, oh, this is, this is cool. Okay. I want to, I want to play this. So that kind of got me in. And then that got you hooked and mm -hmm. running around collecting spin metal and stuff. Spin you know, that that kind of got me, uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. got me the little loops I must have hundreds did. of hours just doing spin metal. Grind. Oh God. Yeah. Or, I forgot about that Luke until caves. somebody reminds me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Luke Cave is going to be making an encore appearance here and couple months oh, yeah. apparently yeah. i still have friends who when i tell them i play destiny they're like oh you run around social spaces collecting spin metal and i'm like guys it's not like that anymore okay it's way more annoying um, <laughs> yes. but that, like that, that those those different elements of like the game definitely like i think i always just saw the potential for the game which yes. i think has really been fulfilled like i know bungie <laughs> says not? like it's an mmo but Finally. I think we've all seen the potential for the entire life of the game. Like as soon as we get yeah. a tease of something, there's always like more potential that could be there. Like one of mm -hmm. mine was always like, oh, we got to see set bonuses in Drifter. Still waiting on that to actually pan out like anything yes. like that, for example. But yeah, potential. I feel like it's a word we hear from a lot of people about the game because I think the passion is always so deep in a lot of people because what everybody hopes could be there someday and it's always like kind of flirting with it ish like it's never never quite there never fully mmo never full rpg yeah it's always it's kind a of, hybrid like yeah. mix isn't it like yes. but it's it's a mix that no one's been in, like obviously anthem tried and yeah, no, Vision there, tried and no one's really been, been able to compete with it, have they, really? Yeah. Like it's, I also it's don't want unique. it to be a full MMO. I, I'm kind of glad no. that they're not going fully there, but I, I agree. There's like this weird subgenre that mixes a lot of other things, and they've not yeah. been able to replicate it. There's been so many Destiny killers. <laughs> they're like really all, had, and yeah. all of them they're just corpses like just great like tombstones i, I, for all I just men. remember the beginning of destiny when it first came out there was like so many there's so much uk media coverage of it really? that it was like stealing boyfriends and husbands away <laughs> from their families and yeah. stuff <laughs> because it was like millions of people playing at that point so. mm -hmm. yeah i was working in the ign office when destiny launched and i remember we kept posting news about it every day and there were some people on the team that were like why are we doing this? Like, why are there so many Destiny articles? And we were like, dude, have you seen the numbers? <laughs> People care about this game. Like, we'll post like the dumbest article ever. It'll be like, here's how to do one tiny thing inside of Destiny and get like a million views. It'll be like, mm, oh. yeah. Like, that's nuts. Like, yeah. Keep yeah. Posting. We should do a podcast where, just for this. Mm -hmm. Isn't Where Is Zer still like a top Google? It was yeah. until yeah. a few years ago, like top and Google. I forgot Zer was stuff. in the game. He bought mm -hmm. videos of him every week. I mean, yeah, I do that. There's was. um even the the people who run where is there the website, they'll do their kind of Friday streams. And like, you know, you see yeah. pe like pretty good sized content creators like glad if he's doing something random, have a couple thousand when they go on for that little like, you know, kind of two hour lead up window. And after there's like three thousand people watching them for like an hour. And it's like oh, this little crazy. pink kink. And it's like, I mean, there's content creators like me watching it. But it's like everybody tends to know about that one thing. It used to matter more. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's it's interesting now because they've obviously given him random roles, so it's actually yeah. made him a little yeah. bit. But they need to like, I think, was it Lucky Tempe or someone tweeted? Yeah, that he needs to be randomly dropped throughout the world. Oh, I would yeah, love to see like, a, like the hunt for a him. Hunt for him, yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. It'd be really yeah, annoying. He, if he, he, used to, he used to be super important, Zer. I remember like he, some weeks he was like the only reason I logged on. I would just yeah. log on, on Friday, go to Zer, see if he had anything. Nope. Okay, log off. Nothing Did, new in Destiny this week. <laughs> did you buy Galahorn from him? I, I did not. the second okay. week. I'm like the only guy who did. I bought it because I thought it looked pretty. And everyone was like, Travis, you are wasting your money. I was like, look how pretty it looks. <laughs> and then afterward, everybody was just like, oh, god damn. Like, yeah. Travis has this gun. And I was just like, what up? <laughs> exactly. back, back then, you had to basically try and get free Galahorn as well. Because they were like dim. True didn't really exist then so you couldn't yep. really transfer it easily so yeah mm -hmm. that was a thing man the nightfalls and just seeing the the reactions of people 
who finally get that drop and yeah. the, the classism with Gallo. <laughs> it was kind of oh. hilarious. Oh my God. You know? LFG. So tired. Must oh. have Gally. <laughs> Must had a, have yeah. Gally. Mine's still yeah. like the worst just because like I had a buddy who played with a ton and he was trying to see how many galleys he could get before I got my first. He almost <laughs> had his heavy slot full. He almost had nine before I got my first one. I think he was like seven or eight. So he, he had to eventually complete it all. But yeah, he had a point where he showed me a picture and he had nine galleys and I had like got my first relatively recently. <laughs> that, <laughs> that reminds that me hurts. of uh, that reminds <laughs> me of helping people do for the for thousand voices mm, and in no. opening the chest. Like I helped like a, a bunch of exports people. Like mm -hmm. I don't know when it was like probably about a year ago. And mm -hmm. I opened all the chests up. They opened all the chests up, and I got like four of them. And I already had it. And I was like, uh, guys, <laughs> sorry, they kept seeing it. Kind of embarrass up. you. <laughs> And none like, of them got it. I was like, what is happening? Here? Jesus. You're like trying to move yeah. the chat dialogue up so people don't see that an exotic dropped. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, RNG, man. baby. Those were the days, baby. Those were the days. Yeah. yeah. Well, any more RNG? So yeah, that's kind of what got me into Destiny. Like, it's, it's, you know, it's tried my patience, I must admit. <laughs> so I think particularly in the last couple of years or year. Like, mm -hmm. I think when it, since it went to Steam with the hacker. Okay. Yes, yes, Maybe. yes. Like there's, yeah. there's only there's only times when I feel ragey in a game is when I'm up against a hacker. Or something. Yes. It, it yep. really it really gets me. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, then mm -hmm. don't play Call of Duty apparently right now. Don't play <laughs> Battlefield. I saw already mm -hmm. has hackers in the beta. Like it's yeah, yeah they're, mm -hmm. they're crazy everywhere. fast. I do have a random question. Um in reference to I think all of us here as Desi players, at some point there there's that point of frustration right there's that point of you know what i'm kind of out right now like ha <laughs> could you did you have a moment like that with destiny and then if so what yeah. was the moment you're like you know what mm -mm. You, i'm not playing right now I'm, I'm done for right now i can't like what yeah, was that I've, moment for I you i think um was it Warmind around about Ooh, then okay okay i okay. think i like i didn't okay. mind the expansion but i think like once i'd got into it i was just like <laughs> It just felt a bit like repetitive and stuff. And I, and I got bored with yep. the game at that point. Yep. So mm -hmm. I stepped away from it. I actually think Sea of Thieves came out at that okay. point. And that was, that was like super interesting to me, um, okay. that game. Because it felt a little bit like, not like Destiny, but like a yeah. lot of the aspects of social play and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I went heavily into Sea of Thieves for a while, mm -hmm. did Pirate Legend and went crazy nice. uh, on that. Yeah, Pirate Legend. Wow, yeah, yeah. Athena level, whatever it was, as well. Ooh, That's like so. a lot of hours in that game. <laughs> it was a lot of hours. Yeah, I do I was, like. I was, I was games. trying to balance Destiny and Sea of Thieves, and then at one point I was like, "You got to choose, Travis. You can't, have <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't do both." <laughs> sea of Thieves now is is amazing as well. Like, yeah, compared to the it's, it's so it's good. massive. Um, and then what yeah, was so the I, moment? I, I, yeah, I paused, yeah, I paused Destiny for a bit there. Then, for a good, close to a year, I'd say. Yeah. Wow. And then and the flip came, side, what was the what was the comeback? What pulled you Forsaken? back? Was it Forsaken? Yeah, Forsaken. Yeah. Like Forsaken was like truly, I think, the best expansion that, that Destiny's ever done. And I know a lot of people say the writing wasn't amazing, but mm -hmm. I think it was the it I, I, the thing for me was doing the Tangle Shore and like that took a a, a lot of time. And then yep. the Dreaming City, the, the surprise of the Dreaming City and just how big it was and all the secrets and stuff that was that was it that that had me hooked straight back in i was like nice. yeah this is, this is truly great so although the other stuff that followed like one-eyed mask and the supers <laughs> and, uh, uh, <laughs> that was yeah but i mean it was fun it was very no, fun no, it seems like no, you have no. some issues with the competitive side of destiny oh yeah well it, this is what i was saying um the other, when we were chatting the other week before the waterfall incident happened. Um, <laughs> the waterfall incident. <laughs> um, Good to you. I like that. I play <clears> the <throat> PVE <throat> side of the game mainly for PvP. Ooh, Travis, I like, you hear this? Oh, I knew yeah, this. Like, I knew this. Yeah. Like, I, I like the PVE stuff, but I feel like it's got to the point where it's, and and I think part of this is is the light level as well, the the the, the creep there, the power creep. But I feel like mm. it's just got to the point where it doesn't feel particularly challenging. It feels gotcha. like I could almost go into PvE with any gun on, really, mm -hmm. and just use abilities. And, Unless they force you, know, you just... to use a certain gun. Yeah. <laughs> you got yeah. champions that can only use barrier auto rifles. Go. Well, I have like six yeah. choices. Yeah. Although there's so many weapons and stuff that you can get around that now. You know, like there's, yeah. there's so many abilities that you can just, you know, just t totally wipe them out. But yeah, so I feel like PvE 
and they're obviously doing this what, what they're doing like legendary stuff I can't, yeah. remember, can't remember the exact term for it but in witch queen and beyond um so maybe that'll get a bit more interesting but i feel like they should just get rid of power level and mm. you know have have hard activities and normal like that should be the standard so yeah, I think I mean, that, that also helps like if i bring new friends in mm -hmm. and and they don't they don't have to grind this power to play an activity with me yeah, it's yeah. like I've been actually playing a lot of New World. Yep, I've been chopping a lot of trees and everything else. So I have been playing a lot of New World. I checked my hours and I was like, oh, crap. I don't know how accurate it is, but it's probably sadly not as far off as it should be. Um, but that is still one of those things. If I walk up to a level six enemy, I just one shot it. And it's just like you never get to do that in Destiny. You never. And that's when you say it's like getting rid of the power level. It's like in theory, they're as powerful as they want you to be. They're going to cap yeah. you in Grandmasters like. They're going to always have the Delta working generally against you. And that's why occasionally you see the people who are sitting there, you know, doing the, what is it? The Shattered Throne Thrall, Thrall oh, Hallway God. or whatever. And they're like level, you know, plus 50. I'm like, why? There's literally zero point. The highest stuff caps you. Like you want to do a Master Nightfall easier. That's the only thing I can generally think of. But other than that, <laughs> it is the weird thing about this. Like. You never get to feel over the top, even in the PVE side, even though, as you said, you've grinded up this crazy power. Theoretically, in patrol, you could still die like and you should nuke yeah. everything out there. So it's always weird. So I get you yeah, on my, that one. My, my clan mates call them power or the bounty gremlins. That's <laughs> for those people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is, yeah. you know, like I guess that, that's the stupidity. Like you, you could just sit there with your computer overnight. AFKing just in the thrall way checkpoint mm -hmm. just to get just to get to the point to be able to do vault of glass master so yep, yep. which is basically i've, I've kind of had to do a similar thing just to get that because i didn't quite complete the seal so that's another thing i've got every seal in in the game Ooh, wow flex yeah. you got Impressive. oh yeah. we Ted, we got called teddy up we're gonna have to compete stats here what's going on <laughs> it's like teddy's got every <laughs> teddy, teddy got competition teddy's got yeah, four yeah, more score he's a little crazier but oh, every wow. seal no, is, i don't do that that's every yeah. seal is still every no joke because like that means no you're joke. running raids in all the different fashions and way that's yeah. everything man that's Ooh. legit yeah, I, do, I do like every pretty much every day one raid if if, if if it depends like if there's stuff going on at work then obviously i don't um yeah. but like uh, i'll do it in the first week at least anyway Respect. xbox and destiny raid come out in the same day what do you do mm. <sighs> that was actually troublesome <laughs> the xbox series x because they both they, they launched at the same time as beyond Light. Yeah. so right. um yeah that was yeah that was that was that was difficult <laughs> it's like it was a wow. tough week don't i don't want to talk about it <laughs> yeah lots what of was... sleep was not had yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Salute, man. I, the one that I'm always jealous, it's the one that she got for doing all the activities with um, oh, Scourge of the Past. That, uh, that, yeah. That raid, that was, that was serious. I forgot the name of it now. But there were lots oh, of Blacksmith. requirements. That's the one my brother wanted. Blacksmith. Blacksmith. Yeah, my yeah, brother yeah, wanted Blacksmith, yeah. and then he That's saw the, the chance. That's the one I wanted. To, yeah, and yeah. my brother was like, oh, I, had to, I have to do a flawless raid, and he just was like, nope. Yep. I, I, and then I, I just wanted one. Blacksmith. There's like some that are called like, <laughs> flawless and unbroken and you want to be like a, a tradesman <laughs> no, okay, your so title like, you nobody some had sound, it so rare yeah but some sound cool like there's one that's like flawless or i figured at some point we we're gonna have like a godly type title i'm like that's a bit like over the top for what you're trying to say is like i'm god cool yay it's like <laughs> no, on the blacksmith it just like it sounds cool so i was like i understood my brother for that one but like, yeah one that's not in the game though mm. iron lord like why is he <laughs> not an iron <laughs> I, know. I don't know where he's up there. Name my yeah. podcast. That's the name of my podcast. I've been so, waiting. I've been waiting. <laughs> I need it, right? like, yeah, How do you, exactly not, you how already do, have that title? Wow. You already how have does Iron Banner not have, have it already? Yeah. yeah. Like Talk Iron Banner, they, they use him enough to like fill space and time. Give us a seal to chase. Give us a title. Get Yeah. Like yeah. that seems like a no brainer. Yeah. yeah. Literally Agreed. in the intro, Saladin, who's long overdue for an update. I threw it in there because <laughs> again, every time he comes back, it's just, oh, get some bounties done. Cool. I remember claiming like 5,000 tokens uh, for, to, for the Reese Walker recently, and I still didn't get a god roll. Oh, my God. I was like, wow. God damn, man. How many, how many did you get in that number of tokens? Like, how many rolls did you get? Not, not even that many. I think like less than 10. Yeah. Wow. Which is, which that is crazy. Whole thing, and the way Trials got redone recently, that minimum needs to happen at an Iron Banner alone, but something cooler would be nice. But yeah, if yeah. nothing else, a little more directed grind would be good.
especially now that they've done this weird split where like you you have to play Iron Banner now because on the weekend yeah. there's no trials when that week's on. It's just really I don't know. I, I like was like that. I know we we had a pretty heated debate when Paul was on. It got quite <laughs> sp- like spicier than ever. If anybody listened to that one. Uh, it was all in fun, by the way. So it's like some people were like, eh, I was like, hey, we had fun. Devil's Advocates. It's always a good time. But uh, I have never in my life when Iron Banner was here over the weekend been like, kind of wish Trials was here too. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, going yeah, like, I'm sorry. Yeah, who am I? I? Have, yeah. yeah <laughs> I, I have never fun. thought I was that like, was going to happen. Me too. I, it's, I like did a fun, miss. it's a fun Luke right now, isn't it? Like they mm-hmm. made yeah, it more. Okay. I mean, it's obviously pretty much. You know, my nan could probably go flawless now, though. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. like, it's, it's so easy. Well, that doesn't put me very high, then. If your nan's going, I got to step my game up because she's beating me. So I mean, Don't underestimate I mean, it's his nan, easier. first of all. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it is, it's very easy. It's, she's yeah, like it's an elite an gamer end, over here. Not an here. endgame activity, as we, as we discussed. At, at mm-hmm. Tom's mm-hmm. nan is a MLG pro. He just doesn't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, former Halo pro. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this game, Eve. yeah, I was going to say, so we actually are at a really good time to talk about, basically, we've got a full, the delay actually worked. I know, thank God, everything works still, but the week delay works. We actually finished our quest. So I want to yep. touch, because we didn't get to talk last week about, like, the conversation everybody was dreading, and then this week, kind of wrapping everything up with the Shattered Realm and actually getting all the witches, and kind of, I wanted to see where you guys landed in Tom. Techians, sorry. <laughs> Don't just... call them witches, okay? That's like a they're very tech witches, term. bro. That's that's like calling that's like calling Tuscan Raider sand people, okay? You're not allowed to do that, bro. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go with Techians, anyways. Uh-huh. Uh, we have seven of them sitting there. Mara's still sitting over there at her console, twiddling her thumbs, waiting. But anyway, we did finish the quest. I wanted to ask you guys where you kind of stand after last week experiencing. The conversation, seeing how everything went down, getting like the interaction with the like the intercom console thing. Uh, Tom, just because you are a guest, I wanted to get your thoughts on it first as we kind of did finish the story beats, at least for a little bit. Yeah, I think it's it's good that Crow finally knows who he, who he is. Like, I don't know how he didn't know anyway, because surely someone should have told him or we found out. Or- I don't know. We were, we were um, only allotted seven words per uh, season. <laughs> So we we couldn't explain it in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 uh, we don't talk, do we? Ever. Twitter Twitter <laughs> limit is too small. Mm. Yeah. Um. So it's it's good that they finally finally done that. But now it opens up the question of like, where's Crow? You know, where does Crow's story go? Like, I know that I, I think a bunch of people think he's gonna they're gonna kill him off. Um. Mm-hmm. I just don't. I don't see that they do that. Like, why would they build up that story and then just kill him off? He's um, going to be the reason this, Sabathin escapes, I assume. That's kind of uh, yeah. Thing, like yeah. it seems like. Um, but do you think the Queen or Sabathin will turn him back? Like it's a, good, a lot of good questions here. A lot of good questions. Um, it's, I it, think Mara's going to be too busy being dead to, to, <laughs> help, to help him with that. That's my theory. Well, we'll yeah, get to def- it. But her city's someone... going to be there, so she might not die now. I'm wondering about that. Right. Someone's going to die though, right? This season, yeah, it, the, yeah. for sure. Yeah, he's got eight. He's got yeah. He's got eight legs. Minimum Osiris. I was gonna say he's got eight legs. I think that guy's dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like I'm, I'm glad they've (laughs) they've wrapped they've wrapped that up. But but then now that that part of the story's finished and you know we're kind of waiting to see what happens with Sabafu and stuff. What 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 are we doing for the next? Was it five months? (laughs) We're getting there. We're getting there. Story now. Yeah, we're getting there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we got two months get on a that Halo one. dungeon as well. Like hey. that was the little was crossover. Like, yeah, yeah, the, the marathon yeah. Halo throwback Bungie dungeon. Mm. Yeah, I think yeah, the dungeon definitely... called Halo Infinite. We're all going to be in that. <laughs> you go in there Just and you've got like a warthog, cave. warthog, and a DMR, and you're driving down like. <laughs> and then you're like, wait, this isn't Destiny. I'm playing Halo Infinite right now. Whoops. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like they're they're writing and I, I, like we're going back to when Destiny first launched. Ooh. Like the way they had to like split that up and the writing and it was all, I think I never really followed the story properly at the beginning to be honest. Cause it was, it was very confusing. Um, very convoluted. It was. Yeah. Um, but they're writing over the past year, especially like it has been, it's been very good. Um, they like, finally gave those, uh, those, those grimoire writers a job on the game. That's what <laughs> yeah. it seems like. Yeah. Cause the grimoire yeah. writing has always been so good. And then you look at the writing in the game and you're like, 
really? I don't have time to explain why I don't have time to explain. This is awful. <laughs> Who is writing this stuff? So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, but do we think Crow will be the hunter vanguard? I think so. I think so. I think I it's kind of think so. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's, it's, I, I'll jump in. I think it's, they want this position to be earned. I, that's the vibe I get from the writing team. They, they, in some long roundabout way, because they have literally delayed this, you know, story for so long. The Hunter, Hunter Vanguard has, has been absent, obviously, since Cade's yeah. passing, and it needs to be filled. But, you know, it is interesting the route they're going, because I'm with you, Tom. I, I, I'm very curious, that, especially with the way things have ended now. He's been, you know, he's been revealed, which is rare. Like, no one generally knows their mm-hmm. past life, you know, prior to a guardian. Now that he has that information, what turn does that make? What turn does it, ha- what happens? Because he clearly looked at Savathun slash Osiris as this father figure, right? So, you know, is he going to do something rash also, right? So it's very interesting to see. I want to know where they go. How is this going to transition with him specifically, into yeah. Witch Queen. That that's the interesting part. And and the last part I'll say is that um, you know, the the vibe they're giving us with the with the Techians and like now the ritual to exercise the worm, you know, Savathun is crystallized hilarious conversation with uh Savathun and, and, and Mara, I thought. Like I thought she was like Savathun is just digging and dig- I thought she was the <laughs> smartest in the room. I thought she was this. I thought she was that shut up. Shut up. <laughs> like that is, I I just like the cat fight going on between yeah. them two. It's a, it's a lot of posturing, but um you know, at the end of the day, I I, I do want to see because they've alluded that while this ritual is happening, that we're going to have to protect it because Ziva or Wrath is going to try to somehow interfere and interrupt. But yeah, I, I'm I'm very curious how, what is Crow's role with this situation? And eventually, in my opinion, how does he become Hunter Vanguard? And if that title happens in Witch Queen or whatever, what do you, what do you guys think? Travis is shaking his head. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're done with the Vanguard. I honestly think that they're telling you like, like think just they're sort of deconstructing all of the old stuff. Like they got rid of factions in sort of like one sentence in last season. And I, I, I don't think that they've really been concerned about who the Hunter Vanguard is because the Vanguard has sort of been irrelevant for a long time. And I think Vanguard's probably the next thing to go from the game. Like it's, it's not going to matter when the darkness is killing everybody, like who has the office job with the title. You know what I mean? Are you saying and it's think... going into the content? For... <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. We'll get there in a second. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I really, I really would be surprised if they were like, all right, he gets this official title and this role and responsibility. I just think Destiny's beyond that point where like you're chilling at the tower and like people are giving you orders and stuff like that. I think it's just going to be like, after Savathun, it's going to be like, all right, we're in the final stretch here. Like things are chaotic. We're fighting a war. Like it's not like who cares who's doing what at the tower. Um, and and I would be surprised if you know, a lot of, a lot of people said like, oh, Makora might die in the next um, next season or whatever. I I don't think that's probably going to happen. But I do think that uh, the old model for how things have existed in Destiny isn't going to be relevant anymore. That'd be my guess anyway. Yeah, that's interesting. I wonder like. There's always, there's always been leaks about the tower changes and stuff. Like, yeah. I wonder if we're finally going to see that get blown up or something. See, that's what I guess I was wondering about, too, because Travis was saying something about the Vanguard. And we'll get into it when we talk about the Destiny content vault of what's leaving. But I sat there and I stared at the helm when I was getting ready to, like, make my video for that. And it's like, there's a lot of things in here and a lot of characters based around this season. Are any of those going to stay? And there was this rumor Somebody got into the, like the modeling or something like the game files of spoiler warning, by the way, that I have no idea if this is anything, but it was like the idea that the helm was like this detachable ship. I feel like I heard that at some point, like the helm is actually something that could like, you know, be potentially and it's on the director as its own note at this point. Correct. And it might just not be connected to the tower anymore on grounded. It could be something that actually like floats or something like so it's like if it ever got to that point and that's just kind of like you know, where we do things from going forward. If the tower gets blown up, something happens, who knows? Um, I could see that kind of happen. At least it feels like they set up a little shit, like basically because you got a vault in there, you got a postmaster, you got a little bit of, you just need like Rahul in the corner next to Crow or something like that. But outside of that, you can probably find places for most people in there. Mm -hmm. 
and it would give them a way to kind of do something drastic to the tower again, kind of as right. we've been through before. Yeah. Which again, the Stratus yeah, would theory. say. It's a good theory. It would, would be nice because I'm, I'm, I've been confused why there's basically two towers and one of them is useful and one of them is not useful. Like yep. that's having to. You have to do to the whole the... back and forth, don't you? Yeah, to yeah. 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 Back and forth. Well, now I needed to crit my Engrams. Yeah, especially for prime. Yeah, tower. for prime Engrams is annoying. I got to keep going back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, just all that combined. So I'd like to see some big shift like that if we're going into this finale trilogy for the saga of light and dark and all that stuff that they're going through. If they do something like a tower shift up going in, like Savathun does something crazy. I don't know. But that would be kind of a nice way to, as Travis said, like have the Vanguard. Maybe they're not as important and it's more of kind of this combination of just like allies as opposed to a Vanguard having any power authority. It's just like Guardians, Cabal, uh, Mithrax and the House of Light and just all of the forces that are working with us somehow have a place to meet and all the NPCs are in one area and you're not running around this crazy big tower for kind of no point half the time. Oh, I got to go do something Gambit. Like, I already don't like going to Gambit. Why do I have to run all the way down there just to go talk to the Drifter anyway? It's like, are we ever going to get more out of that guy? His lines are always hilarious, but he's just sitting down there and kind of, um, you know, mm -hmm. at the bottom of the barrel of the tower. So it's just interesting. And, and if, if if the helm floats, like say it's floating, then this should bolt onto it. And what this is, is more vault space. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> yes, I I am the worst on that one. I have an emote. I literally have an emote on Twitch that is like my cheetah's eyes, like peeking out through a whole bunch of engrams. I finally had a JoJo make that one because, yeah, my mm -hmm. vault, my postmaster, my characters, everything is my vault space. And it's I never just have enough. Fix collections. Just fix. collections. Well, that would help, don't, too. Don't worry. Don't worry about vault space. Just just, just let us delete. Um, Like, say, say I've got a hand cannon. I've, I've killed that roll off. I could just build it again. Yeah, our collection. Yeah, that'll be like, interesting. Let's, let's do yeah, that. You should be able to designate a role for all of the yeah. weapons and armor. Like as long as you've picked, as long as you've actually got that role, as long as you've acquired it, you should yeah. be able to re recreate. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. one. yeah if, if they did collections yeah. right, I don't even think we would need a vault like at all. Yeah, like, exactly. Maybe a maybe for a few extra roles that aren't in your your collection role. But don't like, I know that the the vault space is specifically on the technical side. It's actually tied to like the map memory on the consoles. Yeah, it's it like they say that, but I was like, the PS4 got to be able to manage a little bit. And I know we'll get into all the technical. Yeah. We're going to get into the technical discussions because we have some opinions about <laughs> all that stuff here. So I guess this probably works as good a segue as any when it comes Let's to technical space. We got to talk about this because they dropped the TWAB, but they dropped something before this yesterday. And it's all about the update to the Destiny Content Vault. And mm -hmm. there are opinions to be had on Twitter. If you look for them, it's not too hard to find them. Um. And it really is a question of kind of what everybody, every time this comes up, it's always like this debate of like the technical limitations over what they're trying to do. And they go through it all. And they even have said in the top of it, before we cover what's coming, what's going, um, I just want to read the top. So you have this in the back of your mind, because this is where Bungie is coming from as to the why they do this. So they say, last summer we introduced the Destiny Content Vault as part of our commitment to the future of Destiny 2. The DCV was created to help us achieve our vision for the game through our trio of upcoming expansions and beyond, which they keep hinting at. By cycling select content into the DCV, the team has been able to focus on bringing you new activities and adventures at an incredible pace, with weekly updates that introduce new gameplay wrinkles, new activities to enjoy, and that push the Destiny narrative forward. The impact of the DCV can be seen throughout Destiny 2 from very popular new activities such as Battlegrounds that have persisted throughout Year 4 to innovations that have made the routine experience from Destiny better for every player. For example, the DCV has provided a great deal of technical breathing room that the team has devoted to Im important improvements in to the Destiny experience. Upgrades such as drastically reducing our patch response times, improved loading times, quicker access to the UI such as your inventory or the map, and others link directly to the opportunities that DCV has created for the team. Today, we wanted to give an update on our content strategy for the near future of Destiny 2 and pave the way for the Witch Queen expansion. So there's, they want to give you the technical reasons as to why, but even before I get into what's going on with what's coming and going, I know I wanted to start with Cog on this one because the technical stuff, you were talking to someone specific about this and... There's debates about other games and things of that nature. So I know you were talking to a friend of yours and 
there's debates about if this is required, what other games do. So I wanted to give it to you just because I knew this is kind of something you were itching to discuss. So you're up first, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a hot one. I want to shout out the amazing Hogue Law, you know, and uh, I want to shout out my boy Dom. He's a financial analyst as well on Twitter. Good follows. And, you know, it's it's a point of contention. And, and right now, the issue comes down to obviously the reasoning why they're saying they're doing it. You know, we obviously we had the DCV introduced to us, <laughs> you know, right before that. I believe it was the start of Beyond Light, I'm going to say. Right. So, yeah. um, yeah, right around Beyond Light, we, we were told the reasoning that we were told the game size is getting too big. We were told that they would also reprise older destination and bring them back. And then, you know, we had we lost weapons and so on and so forth. And we were told things would be introduced. Then at that point, things were quote, quote unquote reintroduced from the weapon standpoint, but not at the frequency that the Destiny community liked. We felt there was a disparity. The sunsetting kind of went away. And then, you know, here we are. So at the end of the day, it's two trains of thought here. You know, Hogue's thought is he does not believe in the reasoning that, you know, there's a technical limitation or reasoning and that at the end of the day, the argument is no other game takes away content and then you know, makes you continue to pay. <laughs> it's it, it's it's something that is not really, if we look at other, if we want to call Destiny an MMO or MMO Lite or whatever, that it, it's not equated. And then, you know, to Dom's point, and I was looking at the was very amazing argument on Twitter, you know, he was just like, look, you know, I, I, who am I to say that? Obviously, they've introduced new content consistently. And, you know, they're saying the reasons why. And then we talked about the Tiger engine, right? This engine that has been around from its inception and me, you, E, you know, obviously before Travis, we've had this conversation as well, as far as, you know, the desire to update it, because we're not going to say it's spaghetti code going on, right? We don't <laughs> know the, the aspects of it, but the desire for it to, you know, be updated. So maybe they don't have these technical issues. Maybe we can get dedicated service. So th that's kind of the basis of it. I, I want to, I have my thoughts on it, but I want to just kind of, that's really what the argument is. Cause people are, People are shout out to my editor in chief. I got to shout out yeah. about Josh Josh Redding from LordsGaming.net. You know he's very animate. He's like, this is a mistake. You know, getting rid of the Tangle Shore and you know it, it's a very passionate art. People are like no other games doing it, but Bungie's hustling us and Not you know true. then <laughs> right then there's the other side. You know that is like, yo, other games do, you know have done this and this is not as big a deal. And people are. Fear mongering, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna bring it to y'all that I'm gonna say my thoughts, but that that's kind of what's going on. It is a there is a legit civil war, I guess, going on with this topic. It may not so. be quite as dramatic, but Travis, I know, shaking his head over there, so he's got a thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So first, like, not only have other games done this, but almost every game does this now because mm -hmm. all, almost all games have an online. Uh, element and the online element inevitably goes away when they take the servers down like go try to play a game like a call of duty from like 10 years ago like the servers won't be live you won't be able to access any of those maps or play the game like part of the user agreement now is that games change i also don't really like the argument that like no other game does this or that, they, that we've not seen this in the past with older games because like the, the genre of gaming is changing dr dramatically and the stuff that destiny is doing with like seasonal content and that sort of stuff like that's sort of a new model and there's not really an answer to it like older games were maybe coming out with one or two expansions like skyrim and then and then not no more content destiny has new content every week like you can't just put all of that in the game so i, I will say i agree with hogue that i don't i don't believe the technical limitation part i really don't i think it's okay. more a, a matter of I think it's more of a matter of consolidating all of the players around a couple activities rather than having, you know, 9,000 activities and, and splitting the player base like 50 different ways. I, I don't think that that I think that's probably the bigger problem when they say technical limitation. They're sort of being intentionally vague because they could do it. It's more of a matter of to them. It's not worth it. And, and the the um, the advantages outweigh like the disadvantages. But um, I personally am not a fan of like people taking away content from people who purchased it like i 100 percent get that argument i'm a reviewer so like my job is to is to like speak on behalf of the the player and i i don't think that that's a fair deal but i think um th there 
you can you can say that and then you can also look at like Fortnite and the events that they do and you can't replay those if you miss them they're live events where you know the the, the whole the universe gets sucked into a black hole or whatever like there there's some there's some of destiny that you're not really paying for you're just getting you right. know what i mean and i think yeah. that those things they have a right to like remove from the game uh obviously people did buy forsaken and it sucks to see it taken out of the game but Bungie's also being pretty transparent about it, right? They're being like, hey, this is a decision we're making. We told you that this was going to happen a while ago. We're now telling you that ahead of time so you have time to play it. Um, and also, it's probably not forever. There's probably going to be like, a, hey, remember Forsaken uh, callback where they take it out of the content vault and they'll let you play it again at some point in the future. And do we really think we've seen the last of it? We n- all know how much Destiny loves reusing their old content. <laughs> You know, like, do we you really think this again. is going to be the last time we play through the Forsaken <laughs> campaign? Um, so uh, I, I, I just think there's a little bit of overreaction. I 100% get why people are upset because it's like the most beloved campaign. It breathed new life into Destiny, just like the Taken King did for vanilla Destiny 1. But um, I, I think probably by the time we've played through the new campaign, we won't care as much. I have a question That's before we pass it out to Tom. And everyone. Um I don't play other MMOs, so I, I do have a question. Like, what game, just for the sake of fitness, like what game has taken out content that's kind of like either MMO or MMO like? Because I don't know. I'm just I'm just asking. The two that, big I, ones that yeah. I can think of, like mm. Final Fantasy 14 is kind of a special they one. Have, it died they hard. They have not. They have yeah. not. World of mm. Warcraft has started with like I don't know how much I don't know if they've ever actually taken out anything that they've added. Now, they have probably gone through and they've done the cataclysm where they've like reworked areas. Right. But they've never like gone through and stripped campaigns, to my understanding. Like, right. if you go level that- one to 60 in World of Warcraft, I don't know if that experience is exactly the same. It might be more streamlined. Okay. But I know there have definitely been variations of like the Witch Queen added and uh, like not Witch Queen. Sorry. Wrong game. Um <laughs> What am I thinking of now? What's the snow one? It's the like Lich one of King? Lich King. I wasn't far. <laughs> there you go. Very close. Yeah. The Wrath of the mm. Lich King uh, that was in like the wintry area. Like that was a bigger piece too. And they added stuff. And I know Cataclysm came through and took the two main worlds and like mm-hmm. drove half a volcano up the middle of them. So, I mean, they revamped stuff. Okay. But it's like to take. And it's different for me. I guess I'm going to just steal my time here anyway. Yeah. Um, we get time after. Yeah. But it's like Final Fantasy 14, to my understanding, like what is free in that game is the initial mm-hmm. like campaigns and expansions that you go through and you can play like 100 hours or something is my understanding there. And then you can finally get into what's current, which you can actually pay for. And then like End Walker's coming this year, which is supposed to be apparently a huge thing as well. But 14 right. has the whole thing that you can play from right. start so, to finish. So, so the it's question all there. Right. But, and and, and, and the, ar- the go ahead. Go ahead. The caveat there is that it's a terrible experience. They have to play that, through a hundred hours. The experience of Terrio is irrelevant. No, 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 the I, question I, I, is, no, no, no. is it there no, I, or I'm not? Saying, I'm saying it's bad because they haven't taken it out. Like, if okay. you want to play with your friends, the process is, all right, catch up on a hundred hours of gameplay. Right. And so imagine that in Destiny, right? Like, right. that would be an awful experience. And so I think it's just different ways of doing it. Like, in Final Fantasy, they're like, all right, you want to play current? <laughs> play every single campaign. It's mandatory. We're not taking it out of the game. And some people have myself included, because I don't have that kind of time, wish that they would have just lopped that off, gotten rid of it and let me give me a way to kind of jump to the current stuff. Mm -hmm. And so that that's why I bring it up. I'm not talking about the the content being bad. Actually, the Final Fantasy campaigns are pretty good in Final Fantasy 14. I just Mm -hmm. mean the experience of catching up is awful in Final Fantasy. Yeah. So that's kind of the thing for I was just going to say for me is Picture the new player experience being even more disjointed than it already is when they strip out Forsaken, because now you have Crow. You don't even get to see his backstory because you can't play the campaign. And if they use him as a character going forward, that is a piece of the story. Like you can't play the Red War campaign anymore. We already know that's That's gone. And then you've also got now the Forsaken campaign, which is one of the coolest ones with the Barons, the fights, the Tangled Shore is going to be gone. I understand, like, if they're going after technical pieces where it's like, hey, we have to debug that this weapon works in all places. For some reason, this weapon breaks, like, has a game crashing bug now when you go play the Forsaken campaign. I get those pieces, but it's the experiences that they built that new players won't be able to experience. Like, as you said, Travis, if in 14 you have to play 150 hours to play with your friends, that's not the best. 
if there's like a streamlined button to catch up to friends, that would be good. But the fact that you can't understand, you can't go play the backstory that other people have because it's gone. That's, I think, the part and the fact that they're still selling it right now. When this announcement came out, I feel like, and this is going to open up another point, I feel like it should be live to, or free today. Mm. I mean, they're going to make the Forsaken camp and the raids are going to be there and Dreaming City is going to be there. But it's also three years old at this point. Like if you're going to give people five months or you're going to give the campaign in three months, I feel like the whole thing should be free at this point. Forsaken, it's old enough that like, right. hey, if you come play Destiny right now, you can experience the Forsaken campaign and everything the Dreaming City has to offer for free. And you're still going to then buy the Witch Queen for $100, which is plenty of stuff that's going to help. I just don't think having Forsaken sitting on Steam right now for $25 is a fair dollar amount at all at this point, because oh, that's for sure. That's too much. Somebody said they bought it for like eight bucks on Twitter. I was like, oh, yeah, keep that. That's fine. But like. 25 bucks, that doesn't seem right to me at this point, as it has an end date that is not, you know, it's less than six months away. And it's just the fact that, like, it's one of the coolest stories in Destiny that we got to see with Cade go away. It's kind of his send off. Sorry, spoiler alert if you're too late to that one. But also the fact that you get to see, like, the Barons and Crow, you get to see him, uh, Riven, all of those pieces that are now actually coming into a real important piece of the story right now. You have no way to go back to that. And I know right. we're not going to be well, able to go still back and do the raid, right? The, the raid, raid will be yeah, there. Last wish will exist. Well, that's yeah. going to be even more out of context than it is now. <laughs> right. Well, let's, let's get let's get to Tom. Yeah. Sorry. I was like, let's I know get, we rambled, but I was like, yeah, yeah. we ran. We got to get yeah, our, our esteemed guest. I, I think <laughs> this all comes down to a couple of things: how you value art personally as a player, um, and then De uh, Bungie's business models, which are a little bit hectic for for Destiny, um, because you are paying for DLC content. And then you are paying for like a battle pass, essentially. Um, and I don't think you can really have both these days. Yeah, uh, micro I think the expect don't forget that. And microtransactions. Yeah, That's and what Hulk says. I think this mm -hmm. whole like mixture, this hybrid of like revenue um, opportunities for them, like they're obviously, they wanted to go free to play. Um, the Activision split, whatever, all that sort of stuff. We don't have to go into that, but they obviously had a particular direction where they felt like they could monetize the game. And then perhaps it hasn't really fully gone one way or the other. And they, they kind of still trying to work out the revenue mix. Um, and I think that's the tension that we're seeing in the game over the, yes. over the past sort of couple of years or whatever. I think that's the, the biggest problem at the moment. They need, they need to figure that out because when they're doing this content vaulting thing, it, it, it feels like they're taking content away from you. But on the flip side, it's how do you value that content? Um, right. Like if I go to the cinema, I see a James Bond film and then three years later it's on TV. I don't go, I was ripped off, you know, like that's, you know, it's on TV for free. Like I don't do that. Right. Like, cause I've right. had those at that, that, at that hour, that three hours of fun and I've, I've experienced that. Um, and then I've forgotten about it. I might not, I might want to watch it again, maybe, um, but I might not. And I think that's the kind of same here in a sense. Um, like, I don't go into Tangle Shore much. I'm not going to miss that. I, I have the memories of that and, and it was great. And the amount of hours that I've got out of that, whatever, 30 bucks was like hugely valuable for me. So I don't, I don't feel like I own that. Um, and that's another point is that you don't, I think if you're playing destiny, you feel like you own the content and you're going to go play it in 10 years. You're going to go come back to it. You're playing the wrong game. If you if you had that approach to this game, yeah. really, yeah. Cause it's just kind of not what the game is, but Bungie's never really truly like that. Like Forsaken is, is a good part of this because that was where they kind of really tried to adapt to this whole live game. You know, like they, they said the world's going to change. It has, and it hasn't though. Like they haven't really built upon that. They, they have a lot of promises, you know, like, <laughs> like we said earlier, there's, there's always a promise for this game but they haven't really fully gone in one direction or the other. And it, it speaks to me. There must be internal, you know, mm -hmm. struggles. Uh, like directors want to go one way um, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and I think they need to figure all this out. Like they need right. to figure out their revenue. They need, need to figure it out. But I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. The content fault. I think players just need to understand the type of game that they're actually playing. Um, right. And like, like Travis said, he, he like, the Xbox is great for backwards compatibility. I can go and play a, a you know a Call of Duty game from ten years ago, a three sixty game. I can, yeah, but the servers don't really work properly, and the game just is not great experience. It's like I've missed that time to really play the the great aspects of that game, and that's definitely going to be Destiny. Like even oh, more yeah. so, like the the stuff's for just sure. all going to be missing, and the content's not there. Um, but yeah, like. 
I think that Bungie just needs to be a bit more clear about their direction. Um, I spoke to like Joe and the guys a few yeah. weeks ago. Um, what was the, what and, was the vibe? We, yeah, like we, we talked about a few of these issues, particularly the new player aspect, because I feel like that's, they've really screwed oh, that up. Um, yes, yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to go next, yeah. Yeah, like that's one of the, probably the worst parts of this game is that we can all sit here and we, we know the game, we love the game, we've played hours and hours, but like if you're new to this game, you get thrown in, it's really hard to play. That's what like, I was going to say. So yeah. hard to understand. The story is like all over the place. That's going to get obviously worse as content gets removed. Uh, oh, 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 he's hello. back. Oh, there you're back. back. You're back. Yeah. I saw, right. I saw it. Like, bro- I yeah. was like, so that's me. <laughs> What's happening? No, no, no. You're good. No water. No water. The water is good. We're good. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, so that's obviously going to get worse. Um, and like, how do they tackle that? And, and they've spoken about how they've been able to afford to do like really great content, um, like dungeons and stuff like that, just through basically selling like skins and stuff, which is great. Yeah. Like, I, I don't mind that, that stuff's in the game. I don't mind that people buy stuff to customize. I mean, that's, that's a good model. Um, mm-hmm. But they need to work out what they want to do. Do they yeah, want to? Yeah, no. do, do they want, almost want to charge us monthly to play this game? Like, is yeah, that what's going to come to? Times. Yeah, it's yeah. Really- like, stop. Just stop charging us all these different places. Like, figure out where you actually want to make money. And that one of the points I, I made to Joe, and I was like, please, just like start selling emblems in the store. Like, have have a creator-driven experience where I can create an emblem as a, mm-hmm. a community member and sell mm-hmm. that. You take a cut. All that sorts because they really one thing that they really do well is like they demonstrate in the TWAB every week, people's artistic skills and the creators mm. and the community stuff, but they never really pick up on that social aspect of the game enough mm. and bring it into the game. You know, like it's like dims a third party thing, like all yeah, these really cool experiences out of the game that help you play the game mm. are never really in the game. Like they don't really embrace them enough. Um, yeah, have I gone again? Oh, we lost him. We in, we yeah, in the, he's in the shadow yeah. realm. Yep. He's in the shadow no. realm. He's back. <laughs> there we go. I know what's happening. <laughs> Here, hold Discord's on one second. Let me see if I can switch our Discord server to see if I can get us a little more. We doing it live? Oh, no. Everybody yeah, hold on. Discord this game. More water Funky. on the podcast? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. We'll try that. Yeah. I'm like, switch in the middle. Yeah. I put it to the East right. Coast, so okay. So yeah, we going to that UK West flow. Coast okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's UK. probably what it is. Yeah, that's probably what it yeah, is. Because it was central. It. That's where I'm at. Because I sit between these yeah. two. Yeah, that is what it, I mean. Look, so, these, these are, okay. I'm sorry. Sorry, so talk there, there, was, there was a lot there. A lot of cans that I just opened, but like I think that it, that the way that they make money in this game is, is the core thing. And like like you said, I, you don't like someone doesn't believe the technical aspects, nor do I like. I, I do to a certain extent. So um, their engine is a little dated. I think we've seen that. Um, they haven't, they're, as a team, they clearly haven't, I don't want to be rude about like Bungie, right. but they, they clearly don't really have any idea how to build a game for PC um, mm. because they, they obviously had Vicarious Visions doing that before. Shout and they've the really Vicarious. struggled. And obviously the anti-cheat kind of, yeah, speaks, <laughs> speaks itself. Oh yeah, are you um, implying that there was an issue with cheating on PC, mm. Tom? Are you implying? No, no it's fine. <laughs> but that, there's just so many little things, like even like the CVAR files sometimes corrupt. Basic, just basic stuff. Um, right. And it, it, there's, there's obvious like missed opportunities there, and, and just missing knowledge um, there. Mm-hmm. And I think that all just adds up. And I. I feel like they just they just need to work out like how they're gonna make their money out of this game going forward yeah, and like where where it's gonna go. So yeah, the model. It, it, this is an interesting one because again, for me, it's just there's two trains of thought, and selfishly, as a hardcore Destiny player, I don't care about the Tango Show anymore. Honestly, I would be brutally yeah. honest. Like when the news came out, I shout out to Tassie who we've had you know the week before. In my mind. My, you know, the Dreaming City was out of here. I was like, damn, they're probably going to wrap up the story. Savathun is, is connected to, to, to the Dreaming City. And personally, the Dreaming City hits hard for me because I think you even said it at one point, Tom, where, you know, you're playing Forsaken. And let's be real. The thought was the Barons, we're going to be stuck in Tangle Shore. And then this magical thing happens with this talisman. You, you unlock mm-hmm. it. And you're into this beautiful world of the Dreaming City. And in my opinion, it's the best play space they've ever created. The best sandbox from a visual standpoint, aesthetic standpoint, the raid, the connection, the the, the cycle of the curse. 
like it is truly a spectacular thing. The music, the chants, it's just beautiful. I just, I just love that space. So for me, I'm like, okay, they're keeping that. And then I'm like, all right, why do I still go to the Tango Shore today? Again, this is selfish cognito. This is selfish. I, I'm just telling you right now. I don't go there unless it's for Spider. Like, I'm like, okay, Spider, what's the exchange rates today? Yep. All right, Glimmer. All right, who is the Spiral, Spin Metal, Shards? You know what I'm saying? So that was really my only thing. So when I'm hearing that it's going to Raul's responsibility, rest in peace, Spider. I don't know what's going to happen to you, but it don't look good. <laughs> um, He's uh, done for <laughs> Yeah, so for me, He's I'm like, fine. okay, cool. But then I said, all right, Cog, stop being selfish. I know you play this game every day, but there are new players, right? And the only thing is sucks what kind of leads me back to what E is saying, which is this is really terrible for a new player. Like for a new player, you literally have no idea of Crow's development. You know, for a new player, the connection to the story, who Crow becomes, the whole history of Aldrin, that part sucks. And even prior to what he said, he saw a point, made another good point, which is the Red War campaign, right? There's really no way to replay these narrative beats. And that's the struggle. Like, how do they do that? I've heard suggestions of, like, well, maybe it's some like offline downloadable thing. And, you know, yeah. I, I don't know the technical solution. I don't know how they can fix that. And it's just, they're in a tough spot. They're in a tough spot because there's a, there's the other part that I will defer. I'll give it back to you, Tom, because I don't want to comment. Yeah. The, um, the other part that I do empathize with them is when you have a character like Crow. To me, it is a disjointed narrative experience when we're talking to the Crow, right? And we're doing this, but if I go to the Tangled Shore, he's still in there in the back with the old suit, not realizing he's Crow, right? So it, it, it's just this disjointedness and they, 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 they're they in a spot, but I'll give it back to you, Ty. You seem like you, you wanted to comment on, on that yeah, part. Yeah, I, I wanted to pick up on like the, the, the technical stuff of, like, yeah, let's of go. all of this. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't believe it's like fully technical. So if, if it was like game size, for example, you could just take it out and make it an optional download. Like there's, there's yep. easy ways to do that, right? Like, I mean, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's just, mm -hmm. if it was purely there, there that. There are ways, just, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like like Warzone did that. Um, I don't think it's that, but what I do think is it is p part of their engine. Um, and like, I think it's still on like some, I can't remember what the, the name is, but it's Tiger. still basically Halo. Yeah, it's still like a Halo Reach level sort of mm -hmm. engine, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's scaled relatively well, but it's showing its age. Um, and I think some of the stuff they want to do with the game, like they, I'm sure they'd love to do ray tracing in this game. Oh, like can you imagine, like it looks great with, even without it, but can you imagine what it looked like with it? Like this oh, is, yeah. it would be probably the best showcase like, oh. that we've had for that. Um, mm -hmm. So in order to do that sort of stuff, you can't have all of these planets that people spend, you know, an hour on mm -hmm. a month just hanging mm -hmm. around that they have to go and update. Like we, we've yeah. seen them do this with, with maps and uh, like in multiplayer and they bring you back the maps and they look amazing compared to how they used to in Destiny. Yes. Obviously, because yes. they've updated for the, their engine changes. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yes, they might bring this content back eventually, but I think it's more a, a conscious fact of like, like someone tweeted me yesterday. They were like, I can't believe this. I, uh, and, I, and I was like, yeah, but when was the last time you were on the Tangle Shore? And they were like, I spent five hours on the Tangle Shore yesterday. So I was like, you know, stalker hat on. <laughs> I was like, Destiny tracker. <laughs> And I was you like, no, you the didn't. Receipts. Oh, you pulled off the receipts. <laughs> like, no, you didn't. You weren't even on the Tangle Shore yesterday. You haven't been on the Tangle Shore for like a month. Oh, and it's, it's just, I like Tom like, journalism. He pulled out the receipts <laughs> on you. I like I mean, that. It's like pe people think they like really like need this content uh, no. because because they have that emotional experience, a connection of, of having, to it, a connection, yeah, yeah which yeah. is fair enough. But like, yeah. I think it's like anything in Destiny. Like, there's an emotional part of no, the of community course. who of reacts, course. and then. In a year's time, everyone will forget because the experiences they're having right then will be like 100%. All right, so, so much better. I will push back for jokes on one thing though. <laughs> we gotta we gotta rest in peace to one of the greatest lost sectors ever. I was the gonna say that yeah. the fallen nightclub. The hope for the future. The hope for the future, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on, man. Like, where the Fallen go party at now? <laughs> That's right. They're over there in the Elixir camp next to the Helm Tower or something like that. They're in the last city. 
<laughs> yeah. it's, 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 like, it's always a shame when this stuff goes. I know. Know. It's it's like, like, so, okay, let me cover what's actually leaving yeah, the game. Go, go, go. Sorry. And what's staying. No, and then we'll kind of, kind of break down what the nostalgia hits are actually going to be. So, beginning in February, basically, Tangled Shore, whole destination is going there. Uh, most things with the year four seasonal content are going, so you can picture the... Um, expunge missions, override missions. We've got exotic quests. Sadly, presage is one that hurts for me. You've also got harbinger. Um, you've got the whole tangled shore destination, including the brood hold strike. You've also got the hollowed layer going away. We are keeping warden of nothing. That one is staying, but tangled shore will no longer be there. So it's just going to kind of be dumped into the Vanguard list, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, We've also got the Coup de Gras mission out there in the Dreaming City that nobody's probably done in ages. That was from uh, the High Celebrant Hunt. We're going to be missing now Shattered Realm. We're going to be losing the Astral Alignment missions. And I don't even know what the helm is going to look like. That's kind of one big question as well. But yeah, the Tangled Shore is gone and pretty much everything in year four minus Battlegrounds, which are going into the Vanguard Strikes playlist as the Vanguard oh, yeah. Operations playlist, which... That's a positive. I know that'll give some, you know, variety, at least in that playlist, because there's four of those in there. So if you do run strikes, you're like, oh, it's not a strike. It's got a little thing. So that will be a positive. So we're keeping Battlegrounds, keeping Warden of Nothing. And I feel like there was one other major piece I'm forgetting for what's staying. But mm -hmm. most of year four I and mean, the Dreaming City and all that. Stuff. Yeah, the Dreaming Wait, City is staying. Yeah, right. it's that destination. We, we, raid we, stays, we, right? Oh, no, we, we lose. Do we lose the raid? Or no. no. The no, whole keep, Dreaming no, City. We're, Dreaming we're City. Keeping, like, we're keeping the raid and the Shattered Throne. Uh, yeah, so the dungeon the, is is capped, Shadow. Yeah. yeah. The Dreaming oh, okay, City okay. is staying complete. Mm -hmm. Dreaming City stays okay. as is. The only thing you're going to lose from there is like Astral Alignment and the Coup de Gras, basically the two seasonal things that we've got from this year. But the actual city, the destination, the raid, the dungeon, secrets, all of the Dreaming City is actually going to stay around. Gotcha. Can I completely gotcha. derail this conversation? Yes, I'm please. a little worried, but go for it. <laughs> I see some people in the comments talking about the future war cult gear. And can I just say that's something that needs to go into the content vault, is the future war cult. I was in the tower this week and I saw some hunter with a future war cult cape. And I was like, oh, my God, that's you might as well. Uh, have the Confederate flag on <laughs> your back over there, oh, like the, <laughs> wow! These guys, these guys seceded from the vanguard, and you're walking around in this cape. That's a hate crime, sir. <laughs> get, get, yes. So anyway, shout out to Lakshmi. <laughs> <laughs> Lakshmi is yeah. out here making the tower great yeah, again. Get I'm, rid I'm, of those gonna, evil fallen. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go to the tower and there's going to be a statue of Lakshmi and I'm going to be like, what? We're in Town Square? we got a statue of Lakshmi here? I'm going to start a protest. Take down the Lakshmi the statue. Uh -huh. Anyway, sorry, I just have to say, if you were if you were a future war cult, I judge you. You're, you're, I judge uh, you. You're, <laughs> you're treading on my people's culture and I, I, I'm very upset. I am done they, with they you. Should at least turn the lights off. <laughs> they should at least turn the lights off in the futuristic coffee shop up there. Should, they should probably turn those lights off because that one's... The, the that evil one Starbucks in there yeah, with the, the evil fire. Starbucks. <laughs> the coffee shop where all the uh, meetings went down. Um, yes, but yes, no, I was yes. like, I'll Continue. start just for everything yeah, that's for leaving. It. Oh, we're keeping the Proving Gown strike because that's over on Nessus as well. So that's kind yes. of Battlegrounds How related did, anyway. Random derail, derail. How did Nessus survive... If I anything need to go, it. how is Nessus still here? It's because Just, that's, it's yeah. not the only place that they can really put Zer half the time. There's three places for Zer. <laughs> they're starting to run that. out. Yeah, he's on. You know what? It's Nessus, probably, it's probably EDZ, like or the, the tower. And if it went down to two, it'd base, be boring. The base code for Destiny Two is hidden in Nessus for some reason. <laughs> yeah. You have to keep the destination <laughs> or delete the entire Bro, Tiger engine. That's the one. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it would be bad if you went. Like, I'm like, what? It's still here. Like, what are we really? I'm, honestly, though, seriously, like, what's on Nessus still? From a either exotic quest or there's no raid there anymore. What's no, there? No, it's to... just like there's probably a decent chunk. Of, it's a decent chunk of strikes, I'm sure, because there's a certain number of Ooh. strikes that you will lose. They're keeping Ward of Nothing. So we're really only losing two strikes. But the playlist right. is actually getting the battlegrounds put in. So that playlist is actually kind of getting a plus two. Kind mm -hmm. of surprisingly. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't go to any of these planets unless I'm forced to to get a god yeah. weapon to then go back into the crucible Same. tab. Yeah, most yeah, people don't have love, a reason to you, go. Tom. Speaking to my, <laughs> speaking to my, yeah, man after my own heart over here. <laughs> no like you're making me play Gambit. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, E to derail. I'm sorry. I just had to get my Nessus no, ball. No, well. it's it's fair because that's a that's a question. Um, but with yeah. Tangled Shore going away, Master Hool is going to be your currency exchanger. So you're going to be dealing with him a little more with the Prime Ingrams. Well, I guess more reason to go to the tower. The one that hurts for me the most, and this is one I feel I wish they could keep because for a second when I thought like Tangled Shore is going away, I was like, and then I figured out, okay, Warden of Nothing staying, but that's kind of like Vex and Cabal is like, are they removing the Scorn? But I was like, it took me a second. I was like, no, the Scorn are still in the Dreaming City. They're in yep. the Lost Sector. There's, they're still somewhat around. They're not as much because uh, mm-hmm. the Hollowed Lair is gone on the whole area. But I was like, so that's not it. So if the Scorn are staying, please, can you just put Presage in Legacy? Like yeah, even Presage Harbinger, nice. I don't love as much. Like Harbinger's cool. Uh, don't get me wrong. I kind of like what you do in there, but when you try and solo that thing, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, but I'm going to miss going to Spider for Glimmer there. <laughs> now <you're> just, <laughs> his, now Rahul's going to be sitting over there on his pile of pile of yeah, Glimmer. They'll, they'll, they'll yeah. replace that and the little like story. clicky weird noises he makes and stuff. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. he's yeah. a great actor. Yeah, That's the, the guy from the only one who thinks he'll survive. Like I think the spy. I think Mara is completely underestimating the spire, and and he'll be fine. That's my we gotta see. I mean, maybe see. he'll get away, but they're definitely setting up some way to either kill him mm-hmm. or send him off into like the ether of like unknown yeah. story future. I mean, but, yeah. he had snared I'm, a guardian in his yeah. employ. I feel like he's 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 a little craftier than she thinks. Mm-hmm. Could be. I'm glad they're also, keeping also, the last wish. Be dead, so. Last yeah, wish. Yes. 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 Like, Dreaming that, city that, stays. That, yep. That raid is so so hard that Destiny players had to run into a wall to complete it. <laughs> You know, like <laughs> they yep. couldn't actually do it legitimately. Legit, they had to literally yeah. cheat. The, the and day, and day one, like was, they did it in like twenty three hours and something. Mm-hmm. Like, well, it was like yeah, Glad's was like barely. eighteen. There were and then twenty four hours and two minutes is always the infamous data. So they were the first data. two, I think. So yeah, there were not and, many. The first, like Last Wish, is the hardest one they've ever done. I yeah. feel like for the full second era and and all, and that raid was like when Destiny was more difficult for PVE. Yeah, that was like it's. And, and and a lot of that wasn't Anthem coming out at the time. Like, I feel like the team was like super like, we need to have the best content we've ever had because we've got a challenge. I feel yeah. like they always well, that have was some also... sort of competitor, Anthem, yeah. Division. When, when, Division when they have too. competition, they do their best work. But that was also Activision, multiple top. studios. And that was like, those were the biggest seasons we ever got because we got three raids. We got three big yeah. seasons. I mean, that was the biggest year we're ever going to have due to obviously yeah. the scale of studios they had helping. So again, when you yeah. say... Tangled Shore, Dreaming City, you get the last witch, which is like the biggest raid they've ever literally put together. And then you have the seasons of the Forge. We'll skip over the Drifter. And then also you got, you know, um, opulence and all that stuff. You have three raids in a whole in one year. It's like that was insane. Yeah. That that yeah, it was, that I think scale we'll have was a crazy. Season. Oh, you think I, so? I, I, yeah, when, when Bungie becomes as big as Activision. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> I mean, Activ- they're, they're they're right. Activision may studio. start falling apart at any point, but that's a discussion for a whole other podcast. Other anyway, yeah. Tom, we interrupted you. I'm sorry. You're about to say I was going to say that one thing that I really would love for Destiny to get back to is like the secrecy. Like, yes. it, like the data mining stuff is, it kind of does ruin the game. game a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but I loved it. Like when there was a secret new area that came out, like a secret new exotic, and like people would literally be calling me like, dude, you have to get online. Like it's Tuesday or, or it's just Wednesday, Wednesday, just random points. Um, and they tried to do that with Bastion. Do you remember? Yeah. Like they, they kind of tried to do it and it kind of backfired because they'd already told people they were going to get Bastion. And then yeah, the yeah, community yeah. was like, ah, oh, I'm already getting it. They like, mm. had that weird reaction point. But I'd, I I'd love for them to try and do some more of that. Because like Presage, Presage was kind of like that, yeah. right? Presage was pretty good. About it, and then, it was yeah, so it was good. Really, yeah. Really good. Yeah. I, th- yeah. I think yeah. they'll probably continue to do stuff like that. But apparently they have the technology to... Mm-hmm. like black out certain parts of their code so it can't be yeah. mind. i remember yeah. they said they developed yeah, that tech and i'm like why aren't you using that why like why yeah, do i know about need, everything yeah. before it's in the i game agree then? to me peak secret was whisper though whisper was yeah, yeah. that like was that. something special i mean e your channel definitely benefited oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know <laughs> off of your amazing guy to help me but um yeah whisper was just prime time it also I, came at at a very very low point in yes the yes it was like yes. after yeah. Warmind, and it was like a couple weeks before mm-hmm. I think we started talking about forsaken yep. as like the next expansion yes and yes i just remember like the entire community was like huddled around destiny for the first time in a long time, long time super in love with this new activity and then everybody immediately after that was like well i'm gonna go pre-order Forsaken, like that was the ultimate uh, mm-hmm. push to pre-order Forsaken. But, for sure. yeah. but originally it was Black Spindle, wasn't it, back in the day? Ooh, 
blacksmith. Yes, yes. No, I, that, I agree. That was the same sort of thing. Oh yeah. Like it, was, oh, yeah. it was that. that yeah, just. Just the Amazing. fact that you was, sign on uh, and something had happened in the happened. game, something live. It was that. It was that whole element, right? It's that yes. live. Yeah. Something had changed that you weren't yep. expecting. I was like, I did a public event. What's this? I remember. Yeah. Right, Wrath of the Machines, where there was that uh, whole. Oh, the thing with yes, code. the yeah. Morse code. Yeah. 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 The Guardians yeah. used to have those little spirally things over them, and yeah. Yeah. they had people hunting in the woods for yes. air package. It was yes. weird, man. That was yeah. a crazy yes. time of destiny. What Great was the time, time when when Glad like spent about three days without washing or straight on <laughs> stream? Was, uh, he does that sleeping. every week, right? <laughs> Probably, isn't yeah. Just, isn't that but just Glad? Say, yeah, just what he does. Isn't that what was wasn't that, that quarters of that, that was quarters, right? right? Was that quarters that he did that? Quarters of time that he didn't sleep? They were trying to unlock a door. I can't remember what it was called though. Oh, 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 were, oh. Uh, season of worthy. Um, yeah. that was the season, public yeah. event farming they were doing to finish up for uh Resputin. No, no. No? no, no, he's talking about um this the armory season. All the symbols, that, yeah. Oh, all the symbols oh season of the armory, the yes. Yeah, the and, one that nobody could open that door to the yes. final um the final black forge. Nobody could figure it out. Forge. Yeah. Bungie oh, had to yeah. release <laughs> the secret because no <laughs> that, one could that, figure it out. That was like labs, the pinnacle. That's where they went too far. Yes, yeah. There is a threshold, and they they exceeded the threshold. Niobe Labs and all that, right? Was it? I completed that with Destin and Teddy like a year ago. We went back and we were like. Let's go do that puzzle now that everybody knows how to do it. And it was still really irritating. We got through it, yeah. but it was like, damn, this is like, even even with a guide, we were like, this is not that fun. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Niobe like, I mean, Labs, I think, was it. Niobe yep. Labs, somebody said in the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah stuff like Niobe Labs does bring up like the whole element of the Destiny community where it splits though, isn't it? Like into, this is too easy or this is too hard. It's a little conversation so yeah pve is mm, always tricky. too easy i i do not understand the <laughs> dude i uh, like teddy is one of those guys like we've had teddy on the show a bunch he's one of those guys who says like oh yeah i'm one of the best pve players i got like 63rd on on for you know forsaken last wish raid and i'm like what is good at pve even mean like why is that <laughs> is there such a thing as being good at pve Coming like to me it's like e. it's like it's like bragging about like rock paper scissors or like checkers or you know it's just like is that even like a competitive do people care the about that? We don't need to get into a fight, but yeah, that's not if, the same. If, that's I, not I, even I, close. I knew that was that's not even close. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, only, the only thing that's competitive about PVE is <laughs> speedrunning. Yeah, yeah, I speed, got you, and bro. I'm and, with and you on that. I got, yeah, I got you. I got you. And the speedrunning community. Finish. Like Let kind of finish. gave up on Destiny when they when they did all the the sword nerfs, right? Yeah, and we got rid of the sword nerfs. So. Yeah, get get rid of. I'm gonna come at our toxic guest and toxic co host. <laughs> I'm just With saying. I don't it. understand the. It, it, I just want to know, like, if you say you're good at PVE, tell me what you're good at that makes you good at the it. Because I don't disrespect. Do you know you're good, you are you're good in at the killing presence the bots that don't fight back? PVE basically? royalty. Do you understand who is co-hosting this podcast? Do you not know the shattered realm solo what are you flavor? Good at? The whisper of the worm solo flavor. Do you not know what this man's name was built on? <laughs> Do you understand? This is I don't the even I got, I got Cog respect. over here. I don't, I don't even understand. say anything. This is great. Put some respect. This is the man who gives guides. I'm just joking. But at the end of the day, we ain't going to do that. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. E, you were going to get on to your point. You were going to get on to your point. About? Or did about you just cover it for topic. me? No, no. You were about, oh, yeah. you, you about to transition into something. I was just being silly. No, no, no. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you can be decent at PVE. I guess we can get into a debate on another day. But yeah, it's definitely not rock, you paper, scissors. That's that's I, that's a trash I get, metaphor. I get how you can get bad at PVE. I'm just not sure uh, you can be good at I, I, it. I think say being like, good oh, at, I'm the best at PVE. I, I think being good at PVE right now means like you're really good at creating builds. Because that's that's kind I, of yeah, what, what that's they've, true. they've... Like with all the different mods, that's kind of where they've pushed it towards. So, mm -hmm. Rather than... Rather than but, knowing but, but you all can, the weird little intricacies of the game. You can watch a YouTube video and then be the best player at PvE <laughs> because you did a build that you saw on YouTube. I just don't I don't get what being good at PVE means. It just seems sort of like we like gotta have them do some PvE solo dungeons. I was like, they, they, they out of pocket. They out of pocket today. <laughs> all right. Well back all when right. you had to like I was back gonna when you be had like to yeah. learn how to how to <laughs> skate or like you had to learn how to quick swap, then being good at PvE, you know. It's like there are technical yeah, that, skills that, and there's also people who low man stuff like raids like yes i'm yeah uh, there you go uh um, so kevin the so so to esoteric go, yes. is good at pvp is yes. that covered put the oh, names yeah. up in the chat y'all esoteric is qualified yeah. as good at pvp because he will 
pretty much do anything PVE, PvE yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, esoteric yeah, go, like go, puts go, me go. to shame. Go go try and follow one of his YouTube videos. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah he does things most I, I, I'm people can. I'm convinced can't. he's not human. I'm convinced he's that's a that's a cyborg. So that's not a person. <laughs> well, we, we haven't he's seen an him algorithm. Ever, so. <laughs> we don't see him in his videos, so he could be. You know, he could be. Yeah, I've never seen this man. He's, he's he's just just he doesn't bot. even speak. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I can ever get him. If I can ever get him on the show, I will. But I just don't think he would be a yeah. podcast. I don't think he wants to be on a podcast. He doesn't talk in his own YouTube videos. Esoteric is just Bungie's test algorithm. Yeah. We, just haven't, we just didn't realize yet. <laughs> Pretty much. We're like, all right, let's see how somebody like starts to stop us. Patches live. And how long till he's done solo in this one? And done. Okay. We got an hour and 20 minutes. Sweet. Salute yeah. Man, so. um, but yeah, there is, in my opinion, there is skill in PVE. It just depends on what you're looking at skill, whether it's low manning a raid, whether it's speed running, whether it's just the fact that you're like, you know, going into an activity with a bad loadout just to try and, you know, make things harder on yourself. You know, if you're soloing a Grandmaster Nightfall, that's no joke. Granted, I feel like it's a lot of patience because the whole leveling in Destiny is a different discussion. But there are ways to be skilled in PvE. Some is patient, some is learning the AI, but it's not it's not nothing. I would definitely have to at least put my foot down there. Yeah. All right, anyway... Fine. I, I will also say that there are people who claim to be good at rock, paper, scissors. They have a world championship, and there's some guy who's won multiple <laughs> rock, times. Rock, paper, scissors. There's, there's a guy who's won world championship of rock, paper, scissors like I'm seven times. Him. So, like, I'm clearly there's him. some skill. I, and I, don't I will understand. say, w- watching PvP pros play PvE is one of the funniest things ever. <laughs> like, it's just <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on here. What else we got going on with this talk? Um, so they do state for Forsaken, you will be able to play the campaign for free from December 7th until February 22nd when it launches. So if you've got a friend who hasn't played it yet, tell them to hold off. In weird combination, though, they are going to sell a Forsaken pack. I don't know how much it's going to be. Forsaken pack will be available for purchase. So we're still buying things on Forsaken three years later. I have an opinion there, if you can't tell. Uh, it will include access to the Last Wish Raid. Shattered Throne Dungeon, as well as access to all of the Forsaken exotics. Forsaken pack will also include three Forsaken uh, ciphers, which can be used to instantly unlock your choice of Forsaken exotics. They do not include the raid and dungeon exotics. So if you still don't have a thousand voices, you're not going to be able to go to the kiosk and get it yet, which... I thought I was yeah. going to go to Walmart and pick one up. I know. I was I was hoping the same. Uh, they say if you do buy the Forsaken pack and you already own it, you're going to just get the ciphers will be turned into Ascended Shards. Um, I just had a weird, this, at some point, Forsaken should not be something they're charging for, in my opinion. Like, these last three months, I don't know, it's like, so I know Vault of Glass is their free raid. I get that. But at some point, whenever Witch Queen comes out, that's no longer going to be the pinnacle raid. It's going to be a free raid, but it's not the pinnacle raid. But I think at that point, it's so old. I mean, that's a point where you can go look at Final Fantasy, where you have, like, hundreds of hours of content that you can go play for free. It's like, I don't know if world has stuff for free. That's a whole different example. But I mean, there's a point where I think they've got as much out of that as you probably need to. I don't know why they're still holding on to charging for that one. That one feels weird to me. I wanted to get your guys thoughts on that one, because in my opinion, Forsaken should be free. It's three years old. What you think? Tom. I, think, I think Destiny should be free, right? Like that's what Tom was <laughs> yeah, saying. Yeah. Like, it, we don't understand the pricing free. model at this point, but that's a different yeah. discussion. But it literally does go back to their pricing models, though, doesn't it? Like, and, and where they make their money. Like, surely they could put something in the store that would just make up for that revenue. I don't know. Like, there's yeah. not. There can't be that many people buying. I, I guess they kind of force you into buying Forsaken, don't and they? And that's like, where it yeah. feels bad. I think is they. Yeah. And you're like, oh, you want to play this other cool content for a little while? Or here's the campaign that's free. Well, I did the campaign. What about this Wish Dragon? Well, you got to pay for Like, and then that's, it's, it's in a weird place, as you said. Like, the pricing, they're doing it in a lot of places. But this one, I think, my opinion is, like, I think they've gone a little too long on this one. When do you think they'll actually, like, fix their pricey stuff, though? I, I feel like the Light and Dark Saga... Once that's done, I thought they would have fixed it already. To be honest, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm I, kind of I just wondering don't, if they'll ever fix it. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think they will. I don't. I. It just doesn't seem like it. It. It seems like wherever they can, where they they obviously have a certain revenue stream through certain you know the yeah. DLCs and like it's a guaranteed revenue, so they can then invest into the right. game and whatever else. No. Um. But yeah, like it just doesn't seem it will ever change. Well, that was yeah. the thing too about. 
say you were in this season right now and you want to go back and play some of the other seasonal content, you're like, well, Hunt wasn't that great, but you probably should play Chosen. Splicer was pretty good, but like you have to go, you have to just go buy the whole thing. You can't even piecemeal yeah. the seasons at this point. There's no, you know, part access. It's just so. Ugh. To their credit, though, what other game can you play the seasonal content after the season's over? I yeah. mean, that's fair to a point, you can't, but it's like, like you can't do Apex seasons. You can't do Fortnite seasons that have already happened. No, yeah. and I yeah. and I get that the content's out there, but you can't piecemeal it though like you could have piecemealed it throughout the year but you can't retroactively go back and do the same you can't just like i want to play chosen because they can <laughs> how they're doing it right <laughs> well i mean really now with forsaken it. they're doing it three years later no i just mean it's like yeah it's weird where you can't just you could when chosen started if you want to play chosen you could pay the 10 bucks and do it but if you get past that season you can't retroactively go Hey, I just wanted to play Chosen. There's some cool stuff in here. I want to play, you know, Presage. I want to get the Dead Man's Tale, stuff like that. You can't specifically go back. You have to spend like the $30 now when this stuff is kind of outdated. It's just a weird. And we'll it, say it enough. And it it's all weird. Comes but, back. Yeah. Yeah. And it all comes back to that new player experience as well. Like if, if I have a friend who, especially returning players to Destiny, mm -hmm. yes. like, because there's a lot the of people worst. that do that. Yep. They come back and then they're like, so what do I need to buy? Like, do, what, what guns do I need to get? And then they're like, oh, I can't get this gun because I don't own this thing. And it's like, yep. oh, what a mess. Yep. Like, yep, I get it all the time. I, I literally, mm -hmm. especially when, a, uh, what you call it, Destiny was put in the Game Pass. And I had yes. so many people come to me, Cog, I know that's your game. You love it. I, I'm going to get in. And then they get in and they're like, wait a minute. Like, how did you guys get that cool gun with a horde? How do you get that? And I'm like, oh, well, that's tied to season of the this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and this is tied to season of that. And whoa, whoa, bang, I want 1K voices. How do you get? Oh, you had to buy Forsaken. And you had to do the raid. And you, so it, it, it's just, and then we have always talked about this, E, like the onboarding is just no. for a new player. It, I mean, I know they've tried with the Cosmodrome. I know they've tried this new light experience, but it's it's still a struggle. That's why my new things. I'm like, oh, let me introduce you to my friend Ibanchis in this channel for getting started. <laughs> like, I have to literally point them to a YouTuber and say, watch this, because the game is not doing the job of really streamlining streamlining the experience is what you're supposed to do. And yeah, that's the that's the thing with the i know we're gonna go back a little second but that's the thing with the with the narrative beats uh especially also not having a red war not having a forsaken and then being thrust into a story and you really have no context you really have no history and they, they're in a tough spot i don't even know how to solve it because it, it's destiny's this weird hodgepodge of things <laughs> you know what i'm saying it, it didn't I, I think models good yeah, yeah if, they, if they fix that, like this game would truly be massive. Like, yes. I, 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 yeah. I, I do do believe that because the gunplay, oh. the, especially if you're a first person shooter fan, you could go play Apex, you can go play Warzone, whatever, all those. But the gunplay just never quite mm. feel the same, even mm. though it's still peer to peer for some mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. all this stuff that frustrates you and all this stuff, but like it's still unrivaled. Like it, it really is. Preach, um, preach. Speak your truth, Todd. Preach, speak your truth. Preach, but like, they made it free to play, and then they just made the new player experience terrible. Like yeah. how yep. how does that happen? It's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's it, crazy. I, I, it's it's almost like what you were saying, Cog. Like the. The friend game is the end game and it's also the pre-game now. Like that's the <laughs> only way to get introed into the game is to have friends who can yeah. walk you through it. And I think I think like Bungie at this point is like counting on that. Like, oh, right, you're not going to get into Destiny by yourself. You're not just going yeah. like, to download yeah. it on Game Pass and figure it out. You're going to like need to know a guy. And yes. Destiny, Destiny pops up and game. after you get done with your quest with Shahan. It's going to say, first, go watch Fast and Furious so you understand where this <laughs> reference came from. Second, here's a four and a half hour video from Bife. Yes. Go watch this. Get some popcorn. Hang yep. out and you'll catch up and then you can go. But it's like, how is I mean, they, they've started doing the animated storyboard, the inkblot like kind of stuff. They need somebody who's saying it in chat. And I was chatting with them, too. They need you to kind of go through the basics and understand the fundamentals and be like, all right, sit down. You got about 30 minutes of in-game cinematics to understand yeah. what yeah. we've been through as a player in a franchise, the gods we've killed, the things we've done. You may not be able to experience this, but these are the things we've been through in order mm -hmm. to get to this point because they want the friend to be able to jump in now. 
If they want right. the friend to be they able add, to they jump, added the, they added the timeline. They the added story. a timeline, which was impressive. Yeah. I did like that. You get get trapped. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, but it was no, like I was just gonna say that. Yeah. Go, go. No, that yeah, the timeline's there, but it is just that some way in game for somebody to just it doesn't have to be thirty minutes. That's extreme. Yeah. But it was like just somehow make us and, like a ten minute yeah. like have somebody build a quick summation story. So if you want to jump into Savathun, you know why we're here on year yes. eight. Yes. It's like like that thing when we had Destiny 2 launch and they had, you know, if you yes. signed in with a Destiny 1 account, you saw yes. your old history. Yeah. Yes. Like that. They yeah. definitely yeah. need that. They, need, they it, need the opposite of that. If you yeah. haven't signed in, here's yeah. the stuff you here's, missed. Yeah, here's what you missed. And yeah. that they should utilize that timeline that they created, right? And there should be those storyboard, you know, cinematics and say, hey, this is what happened in, D, you know, D, from D1 all the way to where we are now. Even if it's, you know, 15 20 minutes it don't have to be all day but there should be a narrative beat leading the player to say okay that's who this crow is and oh you know just they, they got to do something better with the on boarding from a narrative and, and, standpoint yeah. yeah and also if you return like so I, I signed into an account i haven't used for like a year and it's just like yeah that's all you get it's just a, a hundred <laughs> different things that mean absolutely nothing it's not like oh so we see you haven't played the game for like 12 months or whatever here's what happened in the game up till now sort of thing like that that would just be so good for a return okay. player like, oh yeah. okay i understand okay mm -hmm. so then I just think, oh i can go get this weapon blah, blah. Yeah. yeah yeah i just think they need to make a new player experience and it needs to evolve every season like yeah. Yeah. change change what what that new player experience Agreed. includes every season and just like keep it up and then if they're going to keep charging us for expansions which again i don't think they should i think they should just change their model it should be a free game and they make their money in microtransactions but if they're going to keep charging you the Destiny Content Vault should be a separate app where you can access legacy content. Like I know mm. that's been suggested before, but like if if they're if they're pulling all the stuff out and putting it somewhere else, then make there a separate app where I can access all of the uh -oh. old Destiny campaigns. Oh, Travis, yeah, Travis in the Shadow Realm now. Yep. <laughs> oh, I went to the Shadow Realm. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're back. You're back. You're, no, no, you're back. You're back. You're back. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. No, you, you moved good. the server too far away from me. Yeah, yeah. Now you moved yeah, too far. Um, now nah, he's, yeah. he's good. He's good. I was helping Tom. You're then I messed with California. You're good. Yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I, I was just gonna say, like, it, they, like if if they are taking it all out of the game for technical reasons, then make a separate app where their offline campaigns or you can play with a couple people and and that sort of thing and. Yeah, I just think they need to do that. Well, I mean, I think yeah, you actually had a sell selling us. I think you had a really good idea with the timeline is depending and it could always evolve. Like you could start like here's the timeline cinematic and you could like shift forward. This is what we experienced here. Then you can shift forward. And as the timeline gets longer, they could just make a piece that covers whatever season just happens and keep tacking it on. And that way you could kind of pan through. And if you it yeah. would be great for us as players who've even played for a while to be like, hey, I want to go back see a cin some of the cinematics that are even in game just to be able to access them. And that could be an optional download, as you guys have said. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you want the old cinematics or something like that to take up right. more space? But then you could at least watch them. And then, yeah. hey, you've watched them all. Do you want to keep these on your hard drive for space? Or you want to delete? Because, you know, those files right. sometimes take up some space. And I was like, exactly. we have all these ideas. And we're like, we'll just take one of them. <laughs> How cool would it be if that timeline, if you, you clicked on it and then you just went and watched your raid back? And you saw oh, all the people you were with, oh. like 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 Splitgate does, right? Like yeah. the their their game saves of like their clips are like five meg on your on your mm -hmm. hard drive page. It's, it basically just recompiles it all in the game. Like yeah. that would be so cool. So you that have would... all the memories of like oh, running around yeah. a raid. Oh, that was... when he fell off and he kept falling off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, there it is. <laughs> all that sort of stuff would be yeah yeah. That was that one of the so more. I, I know they didn't do it to the level you just described, but that to me was one of the more amazing things destiny 2's launch did with yeah. showing you what you did in D d1 who was in your raid party when you completed king's fall and all that stuff and it, you know it was very emotional at the end of the day you know uh, there were a couple of friends of mine that, that passed away and i'm like wow you know what i mean like you get to see it lived on but i, I understand your point but def definitely a good point yeah. mm -hmm. Well, somehow we've talked about the DCV for way too long. <laughs> yeah, 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 I think we know how. We knew. We, we knew that. We was I mean, it's, it's it's all that Twitter's talking about, right? Yeah, like, yeah, I think yeah, Bungie yeah. and Destiny are both. Um, what's it called? Trending. Yeah, yeah. It's Just, the most, yeah. the greatest game to cover ever. It's so controversial. Yeah, <laughs> always have different opinions about it. But I mean, especially when you start talking about PvP versus PvE. Yeah, that's right, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, we have opinions about those things. No, that's fine. Um, 
what it is. Yeah, it's another one of those forks in the road where you're like, okay, take this stuff out of the game. I, that is one of those points where I do feel kind of bad for the developers, though, especially this season because of the Shattered Realm. It gets to live for six months and buy. Like, and yeah. we've yeah. talked about that this, like, one of my favorite activities, the Metroidvania that Travis, like, kind of stuck the name in. I can't stop saying that. And just the unlocks of everything. Like, take that and go throw that in even a legacy or something just as a cool place. You could still have the three-week rotation, but have somebody be like, hey, this cool thing in here. And all you'd have to do, you wouldn't have to have the compass unlocks. Just when you do beacon one, open every, like, open all the little beacons that you can interact with. But you could still do it. Those are some of the things that when they make stuff like this and then it's gone, it's really, we it's got to be a weird thing as a developer as well, because they spend yeah. a lot of time making these areas. Resources. Yeah. And then it doesn't even yeah, last forever. To, That's always kind of to odd. see your creations disappear. As, disappear. As, you know, especially as someone who's a writer, if I lost all my articles like that, would be, you know, mm -hmm. be painful. So mm -hmm. no, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, why is yeah. Travis file like? Why is Travis? We got those archives. No, I'm just thinking about articles disappearing. I've had that happen before. Like I, had, I think I think I had like five years of my reviews just destroyed because a server uh, went went haywire. Or something. Yikes! Yeah. I, I know that struggle. Yeah. Jesus. So you got you got a feel for the people involved in that for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But for at, sure. The, at the same time, like if it's overall, especially if you work there, overall, if it, if it's better for the game, then you know. You, you, it's you'd like, be all for it like yeah it, it's like it does feel like whoever's in charge now joe and, and and everyone like it feels like they understand the community more i think yeah um, i i would definitely, definitely agree with that more they're keeping the content somewhere in charge they're not throwing it away it's going into a vault apparently right so <laughs> they can take it out of the vault later and they probably will we'll be doing retrospectives till the day we die oh we're the <laughs> forsaken here play it for the eighth time yeah. <laughs> Vault's time back for the second for the third time <laughs> for the yeah. third time yeah. Vault is back. Yeah, Destiny, back. Destiny 4, <laughs> Vault of Glass Returns. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah they, they, we see Galley keep coming back. It, it's undying. Oh, I forget content. which one of you said it. It, it could have been you, Cog. Just was like, it's like Galley is one of those things. And somebody's like, we're keeping the silver bullet on the wall. Please yep, take yep. out in case of emergencies. Yo. And Gal, it's let's like, let's oh, look, we got to delay yep, until look next at the, year. The engagement oh. numbers are down. <laughs> yeah. Gallows. <laughs> We got a six month season. Break yeah. the glass. <laughs> exactly. And that that is that silver bullet, baby. Yep. Well, yeah. before we get there, uh, next week we are going to be getting a potential new increase in difficulty for the Shattered Realm. So I don't know if it's going to Legend or Master, but we are going to get higher difficulties in the Shattered Realm. I heard a rumor also for Astral Alignment, but I haven't actually seen that mentioned anywhere. So I'm not sure if that's going to happen. That's just kind of one of those things I've seen in speculation and, you know, data and things like that. Shattered mm -hmm. Realm, I can understand. Three person, you could run it solo. I can see how they could do that one. The six person, if they do like a higher difficulty astral, and then if it's like not match made because it's a legend difficulty thing and they don't do that, it's like it's going to get convoluted. So I'll be curious to see if that's yeah. actually true. But Shattered Realm at a higher difficulty, is that something you guys are going to want to jump into? Is that exciting? Is that just like, I've done it all at this point. I don't need to do it again. Or if there's secrets in there, more secrets. Yeah. Sure. I'm always but, down for a challenge in PvP yeah. or PvE rather. Mm -hmm. Why not? You're a big shattered realm. Are there challenges Trav. in PvE, Travis, or is it just all Whoa. rock, paper, scissors? Not Whoa. right now. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can't think of any. Okay. Have you just... ever felt challenged by PvE content in Destiny? <laughs> Savage. Continue. <laughs> Can you yes. stream I, I, a I, I, solo I, I, Grandmaster I, run and let me know if you feel challenged? Oh, oh the call out. Sure. Oh. I want. I want to see you solo doing? a grandmaster, and let's let's watch doing? this. Let's Even watch this. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah, not, for, that's unfortunately not the way that... for that, I would have to be high enough power level. I was gonna say, are you even high enough to go in? <laughs> He's gonna grind that. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. Just, like just Tom sleep about in the spicy overnight. Back. Tom about no, to get spicy that's, back. That's the hardest part about PVE is how much they really want you to grind the same activity. I do uh, agree with that. And, and, yeah, the mm -hmm. timing is is the the no lifing is the the difficulty of PVE. When they used I think, to, like, I think that's what people mean when they say they're good at PVE is that they have a lot of free time to <laughs> grind the uh, the power creep stuff. Uh, yeah, they have they have so much time. They go one way through the map, and then when Destiny reuses the content and flips it around, they go the other way back. <laughs> 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 they mess you today. Are we doing like mirror? Are we talking about like Mario Kart mirror courses now? <laughs> like go the reverse way. direction. It's harder this way. <laughs> oh, dude. Teddy would appreciate but the like Mario doing Kart. a GM, um, a, a, a master on your own 
is like saying do a 1v6 in Iron Banner or something. Right. Watch do 100 under light or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's like ridiculous. not the way it's intended to be played. Like, yeah. like that's my point is with PvE, anytime you, you say like, oh, it's difficult. It's like, oh yeah, because you're, you like you made your make own it game mode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you yeah. made you your own to make game. it hard. That's the only <laughs> it's way like, it's hard. Bungie didn't make it hard, so that you had to make it hard for them. <laughs> GMs, yeah. they decided you are this below level and everything's going to one shot you. Go. Pretty much. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. That's good. Which I mean, is, which is still, not, they're, it's, they're it's still not pretty hard. easy with a three person, though. With three people, they're not super hard. You, the hardest part is getting power level. It's it's not hard. It's just frustrating getting one right. shot. That's yeah. the difference. It's yeah. like after playing yeah. too many Souls games and other things, like even difficulty can be difficulty done in different ways. I still don't love the way it's done in this game. As a PvE person, that's kind of frustrating because... I can learn skill and things like that, but like there are moments where you're like, hey, I got damaged in Dark Souls, but I can heal myself because I had a stupid moment where I got hit, but that was on me. But yeah. every moment you can recover, you don't get the chance to recover on some of these things because right. if you're not perfectly loaded out, you're not this thing or the otherwise, or you just sneeze and like your elbow's sticking out and you get <laughs> sniped or something like there are points where, yeah, it's just, I don't love the way that's done. It's like, I still wish that felt a little different, but still it's, we still, you know, bash oh, our heads through it. Yeah, or there's oh, yeah. no radar and you're used to having a radar and they just decided that week that they're turning it off. And then yeah, you're like, yeah. oh, you just got sniped. No, no radar Ooh. and all melees oh, or instant oh, kills. All melees. Those are the yeah, worst. That's yeah, such a nasty combo. Or yes. that old, Attrition uh, still sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, attrition. Is that the one where you can't heal and yep. you have to stand on those poles? Mm -hmm. It just well, slows down game. The play. lost sector that I did, the little pools are sitting in the light are because you kill a bunch of goblins and they drop the little lightning on the floor. So all the little restorative light pools are in the lightning death. Great. So every time Great. you got to get one, you're like <laughs> that. That is game design right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I feel I feel like people who are good at PVE, what they're really good at is having a ton of patience for all the BS. Yeah. That's in like those PVP, PVE it, modes. It, there is patience with, yeah, with trudging through rooms and the, I, yeah. I ain't going to front. Yeah, that, there's definitely a lot of that. Yeah, yeah for sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, higher difficulty e, coming and on? then Festival of the Lost actually begins next yeah. week, as many of us expected. So we do get mm -hmm. our Halloween event. They did actually a really cool thing. Um, they worked with a um, basically an artist. So Bungie collaborated. So would you what were you going to say? No, I want to. This was actually special for me because I know who go that for is. It. No, yeah, a, go for it. Yeah. Luis oh, really? is a good friend of mine. He's actually from the Undead Labs team, from State of Decay. He was formerly of, of the Undead Labs cool. team. Good guy. We've had him on ILP before, right around when State of Decay 2 launched. And I kind of knew about this, but I was supposed to be quiet. So I'm glad I could talk about it now. But yeah, so it, it's cool. He's of Mexican descent. Very nice guy. And he's the one uh, what specifically told me that. And he's a huge Destiny fan. Huge Destiny fan. Guy is like super passionate. And uh, he was saying like, yeah, I'm working on something for your game. I'm like, really? You know, I couldn't talk about it at the time. So, yeah, it was cool to see him get this spotlight and uh, get the love from from the uh, from Bungie and, and the community. So shout out to my boy, Luis. Yeah, Pez. Yeah, so he did a Dia de los Muertos Day of the Dead shell, which actually looks really, really cool. I kind of like the art style on it, the direction that he took. And they showed kind of some concepts that he did. But they did a whole interview with him. And really cool to see just like... Bungie in the TWAB, shout out an artist, work with somebody in the community to like put something in game. And Tom, you literally said that. And I've seen other games do this too, where it's like, you know, if you go out and somebody community sources it and Steam does it with, you know, the Steam, what is it called? <sighs> where people like make mods or skins or other things. And yeah. then I can't remember the name mm -hmm. of it off the top of my head. Them. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember what it's called. But, yeah. And they sell them, you know, they take a cut, you take a cut. But some people like, make decent money if you put decent mods or skins or certain things together by yeah. putting their efforts in. So it'd be another way, another way for Bungie to make some money, but it'd be cool to get the community involved because the community for Destiny has so many amazing artists. Prime example is this one. So it's really cool to see that kind of shout out and the interview to go with it. They could just be like, hey, here's this guy. They did full interview with him. So that was awesome to actually see. So that one will be available for silver and bright dust when it comes through the mix. You'll be able to see that one come through. And of course, we have dinosaur armor coming. If you guys remember, that is <laughs> yeah dinosaur armor. So who's uh, who's excited for the dinosaur that you get? Or did anybody feel their class got screwed? By the way, Ooh, who got right. the triceratops? No, I'm happy. Yeah, we got T Rex. There was like a raptor. Do you, who got triceratops? The triceratops feels right for the warlock, though. It's an herbivore. It's kind of. Uh... <laughs> 
haggard, you know, like Orlando. You watch I your mouth. We, gonna, we, we ain't going to yeah. do that. <laughs> <laughs> They're more the like this is back. <laughs> the T-Rex is a Titan, right? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Is it yeah, like, with the, the, like the tiny hunt- arms always Yeah, punches. with the tiny arms. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, see, that's fitting. Yeah, the raptor <laughs> for the hunter, <laughs> you know, agile, worked, yeah. They kind of, they got them right. I was like, yeah, Warlock would be, like the hunter and the Titan makes sense. The Warlock's kind of, that's probably a bit more of a stretch, but yeah, it's still is probably as close as you can mm. get. Well, they get that lo- cool boots with the toe. That's like the yeah, best yeah. piece of armor is the toe <laughs> on the mm-hmm. uh, hunter. It's got that. I love, a, I love a lot of the armor they've been doing, but yeah. why have they still not got like the year one stuff? You remember the ornaments? They're still not there. Yeah. Thank it's you. Apparently, it's a technical limitation. It's been yet another technical limitation. It's been vaulted. Yeah. <laughs> they just didn't tell us. Which, what are you looking for from like, say, year one? What are you, what are you wishing was in here? Those, okay. like, the Iron Banner Iron with Banner. year one ornaments are so good. Yeah. Man, with the, f- the fire chest. Yeah. Year one, they have, they have yeah, that trials. for some reason. But mm-hmm. that, that is in the game, but I think you have to apply it to Trials Armor. But yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Iron Banner Armor was insanely good. You yeah. know, from yeah. D1. Well, we don't even have, have a way, to, like people were saying with the DCV to throw back for a second, like Whisper Catalyst, Outbreak Catalyst. There's People don't have ways to still get those, and people are like, well, Dead Man's Tale and Hawkmoon are about to go away and be in the same boat. We don't have the old ones fixed. So again, I was just like, yeah, don't hold your breath. Probably not coming yeah. soon. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, those are some of the weird things. And you're like, how long is it going to take for somebody who you can now go buy the gun, but you still don't have a way for them to get the catalyst? Just yeah. they need to put them in there. So again, Th- that, that fawn armor though, that they bring out, that looks. Yeah, so, that looks nice. I like that. that. So yeah, good. The, th- good. the thorn. Yeah, that. I wonder how hard that's going to be to get. Do you think it's going to be like a weekly rotation where you can get like one piece a week type thing, maybe from a boss or to like stretch it out? Eververse, for sure. Yeah, it'd be time gated. Yeah. Like Bungie loves a good time gate. Oh, know? for sure. For <laughs> sure. No, you'll, you'll buy it with, bri- with, uh, with silver, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I think that you, yeah. only get, you only get two pieces a season. Yeah. <laughs> to get your synth cords and weaves and strands. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Started. yeah, we we lost our minds on that one. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, but we do have a patch coming on Tuesday. That one's actually gonna do some fixes. They're taking a champion out of the corrupted strike just because it's the ogre section between the two realms. Some people would miss him, so he's coming out. Crossplay UI is getting a little fixed. But the biggest thing, Grandmaster Nightfalls will now have a 100% chance to get an Adept Nightfall drop. So now every time you run a Grandmaster, you will get an Adept weapon. It was a chance at before. I don't know how low it was, but it is 100% now. I think this is probably what it should have been the whole time. If you're going to go barrel through a yep. Grandmaster, you should at least get something. I, <laughs> I think I did like seven Grandmasters in a row on a double loot weekend, and I didn't get any Adept weapons. I got every Adept mod, though. I was playing with uh, DJ Oros and some other people. They can Shout testify. Out. Yeah, he's in there. He's I, got, in there. <laughs> I got nothing, and I was just sitting there like, yeah, this is really great, guys. I'm glad we, uh, <laughs> glad we grinded through this strike we've done a million times, except for way worse this time, just Ooh. to get nothing. There's one thing in the TWAB that they didn't mention. Which is that it's, it's launching on Xbox Game Pass for PC next week. Yes. Yes. yes that's that's a big deal. And I'm going to test it. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to test could, it. I'm super curious to see if it loads faster. Because, mm-hmm. oh my God, since Battlelight, it loads so slow now. Really? Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah, realize it's, that. it's really noticeable. It's not console. Kind of you just, you, you just you know, hit a button yeah. and it starts loading. On Steam, it's always been like that 10 seconds waiting for it to open. Mm-hmm. Now it's, yeah. it's longer. I wonder it's if it's classic. anything with the now the mandatory anti cheat installation. I wonder if that has anything to do with the. Could be oh, yeah, it's definitely way. slowed it down. It's definitely yeah, slowed it down. Sure. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm mm-hmm. curious because um, you know one thing that I, you know, I have some relationships with the Xbox the platform team, and I'm I'm always on them if they truly want to spread the ecosystem correctly. The PC ports need to improve. They really yeah. do. I've oh, yeah. had some bad experiences. Was the, you know, and the I Ascent know, was one. I think you guys mentioned recently yeah, on Ascent Duke. I was one. Shout out to Maddie with the finding that we talked about it. You know, I, I'm always going to champion that because at the end of the day, you have to take the PC community much more seriously. And from my understanding, a lot of this stuff is, you know, UWP and, and when Windows 11 yeah. comes out, hopefully they're going to address. But I do want to see how Destiny 2 Game Pass 
works as opposed to Steve. I'm very curious about that. I don't know. So I, yeah, I'm going to be getting my little tech on and maybe e, we could do some testing and, and see how that goes as well. I'm very, I'm very curious about that experience. Yeah, I'm, I'm super curious whether it's different at all. For sure. Yeah, big time, big time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that uh, 10 seconds you have to wait to open up the game, by the way, Tom. We call that the cheater's penalty. You all have to wait an, eight, an extra <laughs> but seconds. Cause but it's always been pretty bad. It's always yeah. been pretty bad, though, isn't it? And so it's have got PC got players. PC players have always been pretty bad. Oh, dead. Wow. She just constantly. Long before, long before Destiny. Will yeah, I don't think he good. I don't think Travis is going to work out long here with you. No, no. <laughs> he's going to just because. He was, just he was slander, a temporary host. The yeah. PVE slander. Like, literally the core <laughs> tenets of who you are. This man has been slandering you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hey, I but play just on PC, just, too. That's why I have so much ire for the fact uh, that they're all cheaters. Just because I've got 10 macros assigned to my mouse, it d doesn't mean I'm cheating. <laughs> and it's like, have you seen those MMO mouses with like 18 buttons on your left thumb? Those things are yeah, always crazy. Those, those crack me up. New Red oh, actually had dude. an interesting point, though. I wanted to point this out. What is um, mm -hmm. He said free Game Pass for PC on the same content they use as a paywall on Trials. Yep. Yep. I said that that is a thing because you can get a dollar trial you get it for, for free. Game Pass. Yeah, yeah, free, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it could be a problem. I was um, like, yeah, I was like, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if, and I guess the thing is, I don't know if Witch Queen is coming to Game Pass anytime soon or if they give this like yeah. longer window and then it comes later in the year or something kind of as they're doing now. I don't know what the plan is, but the yep. fact that if they're trying to get those a little more concurrent for Xbox and PC, mm -hmm. if it's free on PC, then that's. I don't know. That'd be a thing. I guess, though, like if you do cheat and like your main Game Pass account is linked across all your Xbox stuff and then that email gets kind of screwed. Mm -hmm. That would probably get a little frustrating to have to like log out, use a different Game Pass. I know cheaters are going to go around the whole thing, but it's like if that's kind of linked at all, you're not going to want to obviously mess with your main. I don't know. It's just it's, something it's that does open it up a little. The main way that cheaters acquire accounts is from people just selling their old accounts on eBay. Right. Like they, because because you also have to, you know, level up and get to a certain point before you can even enter trials. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um I don't think many people are gonna be selling their Microsoft accounts on eBay. Like right. Right. not not their main that's true. Yeah, not, sure. I don't think you're gonna do that. So mm -hmm. so it, it is definitely a concern, but yeah. Hopefully it is not interesting. Too bad. interesting. It is interesting for sure. Mm. Well, before we kind of ramp, Tom, if you've still got some time as you're here, I was actually wanted to ask as you're kind of competitive, um, trials we didn't get to kind of do the retrospective on it last week it got a little hot the week before um sorry guys no it's all right uh well, it the was the destiny oh. community got upset not us not us they, no, no, they hated the game. me speak for yourselves they were so mad at me dude my my dms you guys have no idea really? people were calling me elitist oh dude yeah like oh, I, know that was a, you. I didn't know they dm'd oh, you dude. i just saw comments oh, on my video dude. so bad like i was gonna i was it was like all week i was just like fielding all these messages and i respond people dm me i i, I like talk to them and stuff like that like why are you elitist why do you want people not to go to the lighthouse i'm like dude did you even hear what i said on the show <laughs> like i didn't say any of this stuff like i don't know but, oh but yeah. my god uh, yeah, the comments were interesting to say the least, but we've mm -hmm. had the full three weeks of experiment. Iron Banner was kind of the week off. It is coming back. Um, basically, at this point, they're going to leave it to where the Sunday daily reset is when they're going to turn on the flawless um, flawless pool. So Friday and Saturday are going to be kind of open matchmaking. Sunday and Monday are going to be flawless pool will be activated. It will be normal trials. There will be no capture points. Um, so that's kind of where it's going to be going forward, at least for the time being. They are going to do the like freelance trial at some point later on. They haven't given a date on that one. But for the three weeks we got, finally, again, with the point and everything else and where it's kind of landed for the moment, where, especially Tom, I want to start with you. Where are you in all of this trials experimentation that's been going on and where do you think they've settled for the moment? Yeah, I think they experimented with too much too soon. Um to be honest. Um, and I think they've, 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 they've settled at, at probably where you, they probably would have settled at anyway. Cause I think turning it on straight away was a mistake. Um, so having it this Sunday feels a bit more balanced, but I'm still not sure about it. Like, I don't know. Like I, I played, I think that first weekend and then like, I think we were just matching the same. Like I played at 6 PM, so which is reset in the UK. And I played, 
went flawless by about 7.30 or something like that. So pretty soon and not, not super soon. But then like we were just matching the same people straight away because of the, the, the flawless stuff. So it was, it was not, that was not a fun experience, but when, when it was open to everyone on that first weekend, like it was great. Like I, I could, I could then go and, you know, grab clan men members that I knew weren't, you know, the strongest players. I could take them through, through, like, but I think that's the biggest problem with all their changes that they've forgotten that people like, like to play with their friends <laughs> yeah. and like, like mm -hmm. to, you know, and, and don't, I don't always want to like have a sweaty game when I play as well. Like I, I do mm -hmm. want it to be competitive, but I think the competitive level of trials should be when I'm at seven wins and there's a lot of loot on the line, then that should be match. Make me to the highest tier players. I don't mind mm -hmm. that because I'm, I'm trying to win at that point. I've gone flawless and I'm trying to win additional rewards that are pretty high, highly valuable. You're getting a depth weapon and you're getting like golf balls, whatever they're called. Um, yeah, yeah, I can't well, get you on yeah, golf balls. Golf balls work. We got the Yeah. So I think they, I just think they experimented a bit too much, um, especially with the zones thing. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, how did the you whole feel zones about, thing? Yeah, well, how did you feel about that? Like, it's fine. It, I, I don't particularly mind that being in the game, but like, there was some basic stuff that they obviously hadn't tested properly. Like, you, you could continue capping the zone at the end of the thing to get 10% yes, of the super. Super, yeah, 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 yeah. So like, so like, you would strategize around that essentially to like protect the zone and then just you'd kill someone and the other two would sit on the point and the other person would come and run and you'd all get 10% super. Just like, mm -hmm. yep. th that's just silly. Um, mm -hmm. And then the way that it just ran, to, like they, where they put it, the, it was yeah. in the, the, the spots were like either Iron Banner or Crucible um, spots. I don't know. Like, it, I, I think it would have been funny if it was in random spots. Okay. Yeah. You know, they just dropped it randomly and yeah. a little bit closer, obviously, if you were losing and stuff, but it's fine that they experimented with it, but I, I don't feel like that makes it particularly competitive having that, that zone. Okay. Like, so overall you, you, you'd be good if that never came back. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I'm not like a, a massive, I don't hate it. Yeah. I don't love it. And I think they'd have to do a fair few changes to it to make it feel a bit more balanced. Yeah, like right mm -hmm. now you're just kind of ambivalent to the whole thing. Yeah. yeah I think that's what most people were. Cause I think, a lot of people just pretty much ignored it yeah. to the point where like, you'd be like, Oh no, the guy's cap. And it's like 90%. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like, oh, we lost that round, but Hey, yeah, we just got into our forgot. side now. So we lost the round and now yeah. it's on our side. Yeah. I would say for me, just the more, mm. the like strategic movement of it. Hey, we're up four wins, but let's lose one. So then now the points <laughs> on our side and we can just play defense and like turtle up. And it's just, yeah. That I think is what you said. It's like, for one, the fact that it shows up like straight away. So you know exactly where it's going to be. If it was like 30 mm -hmm. seconds and then it's like, hey, it's going to appear here in 10 seconds or something. It'd be like kind of a and, and as you said, if there was more than just like A, B and C, like you're telling me you have yeah. one map to work on. You can't like update a map to say, hey, now it could have like 12 more different. Well, just put it all over the map just to mess with people like just to see some interest that would be interesting but the fact that people were strategic to be like four one lose one now it's on our side camp it got it done yeah, like that was a strategy and, yeah and there was like basic functionality with it which was just broken it's like it wasn't it 30 seconds i think but by the time you'd actually spawned in it was like 24 25 seconds so you lost yep. that five seconds like it just just come on like <laughs> It's basic, real basic stuff there that um, that they hadn't got right. But, you know, it was a test. It was a beta, they, you know, mm -hmm. essentially. So it was, it was fine, but it's not there this week. So I think I'm super curious to see how today goes because yeah, yeah, well, yeah this is sure. like the combination of the like kind of changes they've put in there. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I, I, I appreciate where they were trying to go with some of those changes, but they definitely like their lighthouse experience now is a lot easier than it ever has been for sure. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm not a fan of skill-based matchmaking. Mm. So, mm. Interesting. Yeah. What about Ooh. a ranking system? Yeah, like a ranking system. Like I think Rocket League. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, the, only, that's, the, that's... the main the main reason I don't like skill-based matchmaking in Destiny is because it doesn't have dedicated servers. So if I get skill-based matchmaking against someone, I could be playing like someone in Russia for me is really laggy. Someone in China for me is really laggy. Um all, all the sort of countries that are a little bit further out than than the UK, like your connection to that person just makes it really difficult to even compete against them and they're good players. So it's like, right. 
that's not yeah. that's not the way for a p2p game to to match make people um yeah my my main problem with skill-based matchmaking is what they've done in the past is that it hasn't been transparent and you you yeah. have no idea by what metric they're doing it and there's a lot of theories that the way they were doing it was based on play time which is kind of insane to me because huh. yeah like play time in pvp or just in the game in general um but i think if they had like a I just want there to be a rank system so that I'm playing yep. against my peers. Like I, you yeah. know, I'm not, I'm not the world's best uh, trials player any, anymore, but I, not that I ever was, but I'm definitely not as go. good as I was in, in, when I had way more time to play destiny. Um, but I, I want to at least be, feel like I'm playing in the same bracket as like people who are at my skill level. And I think everyone should be forced to play at their level in trials and, and the, the kind of like wild westness of the matchmaking system right now <laughs> it just it just does not lend itself to a very competitive or even like well balanced experience because sometimes you're just getting destroyed and other times you're yeah. destroying other people and it just doesn't feel good it's just when it, and they have lobby balancing now which makes it even worse so it's like if you're playing oh, yeah. solo like crucible you, you just want to play some chill quick play you can never if you've got like two three thousand elo in a particular place you cannot have a chill session of quick play because it will lobby balance you to the point where you've got three people who are basically, you know, staring at walls. Um, and yep. then you're, you're out there like, I, I'm, you know, trying to play the game here. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's just, it just doesn't work. And I, and I get that people hate, like people really want skill-based matchmaking because they're like, I don't want to play these higher tier players. But, but really like that shouldn't be a thing. You, you should want to play them because it will make you better at the game. It makes you have more game awareness playing people. Ooh, who are gonna ally. Occasionally. I was like to a um, point. I was like, I will say to a point. To a point. Yeah, I was like yeah. to a point when the disparity is so big that you, because we had uh, sent Nomad on a couple of weeks ago, and that's kind of the thing. It's like he likes oh, yeah. games where you Love can, yeah. um, like I want to learn something out of a game, and if something as Travis is saying, if I'm playing people around my level, and there can be a decent range to that level, there could be somebody like three or four steps above, but twenty steps above. <clears throat> there's yeah. there's there's yeah. a level so far that I don't get a chance to learn but like as you said yeah. it's like playing against better people than you like even to like an incremental percentage better it's like that is how you learn that's why those brackets when you slowly start to work your way up that's good but if you're mm -hmm. playing like bronze the diamond you're like they're doing things I don't even understand so there's there's and as you yeah. said the skill based with you know there's some some wiggle room in there it's interesting but yeah it's like too far yeah, exactly is just kind of weird I think yeah, Paul like, said well, in the last episode that like he didn't want he didn't see a world where Bungie would make trials like more competitive. And I'm like, I, no. I don't even want it to be more competitive. I just want it to be like. Bracketed, <laughs> I just I just want like you can still go trials if you're super low skill, your KD, your KDA is like really bad. But as, as long as you're playing against other people that are in that level and that you comparatively are doing really well at your level, and then I'll do well at my level, and then the gods will do well at the god level. I just want it to be a similar experience across the board at all skill levels. So I'm not saying like, oh, you know, make it so only the best of the best can go flawless. I'm just saying make it across the board a, a more competitive yeah. experience where you feel yep. like you're learning. That's all. Yeah, and I think that is definitely the best way to handle it. But at the same time, like just Destiny as a competitive game, it's just it's never going to be competitive regardless of what you do to the ranks just fully competitive right yeah just because like the hitboxes are huge peer-to-peer -peer, like there's so much stuff like it, right. it just and never will attract those players that don't play it anymore um and then but, they they have to struggle but, but, with they, the... but they do exist in the destiny universe and i think it's not like, every pvp competitive player in destiny knows the, the pitfalls of of destiny and why it will never be like a halo level like you yeah. know arena shooter but the reason they stick with it is because everything else surrounding destiny is so good it sort of is worth some of the shortcomings like that's why i do it for sure and i just yeah. think they could do some easy tweaks to make their game a little bit more balanced when it comes to matchmaking and the way that they do pvp i'm not saying like oh yeah this needs to be like uh, an mlg tournament because that just is never going to exist for yeah. the destiny com community but i just think there's something there and they can do a lot better of a job. And then also, I just have a problem with people saying like, oh, Destiny isn't that. Therefore, it never can be. It's like, well, yeah, yeah, true. you know, just, Destiny has never been defined by what it is at, at the time. Like it, it can improve. It can get better. And I just think when it comes to PvP and the competitiveness of it, I just think they have a lot of room to grow. And yeah. it, it wouldn't require a ton of work to get there. It would just require them to 
make some strategic decisions that, that make it a little bit more uh, balanced. That's all I think. The, I mean, the other thing is that they have such a, a sandbox issue that they've always had, right? And, right. and, and it oh, comes, yeah. again, it comes down to the revenue thing. So they introduce stuff like stasis. And they introduce yep. that into PvP. They know it's broken. They've tested it. And they, they, they don't just roll they this stuff out and be like, oh, oh, it's, yeah. oh, it's broken, you know. It's, it's there. <laughs> I'm so surprised. <laughs> Whoops. It's, it's Sorry about that, guys. No way. Yeah, because you get shot by that stasis thing. <laughs> and you're like, I'm going to go buy stasis. That's literally why it exists. That's, that's why OP exotics exist. Like, of course. They, they, yep. they, it's know, a marketing yeah, tool. We all know this. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. I know what it is. But, yeah, but like, right. they, they do need to like fix up that sandbox and like try yeah. and find better ways around that i don't even know cater. if that's fixable man there's just too many guns yeah. too many weapons and it's growing we're gonna get uh, uh that new, uh, e. vapor i think is coming you e. know, at some point uh, so so maybe, so maybe they need what, to uh, sunset here it goes, <laughs> here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes. i agree with e on that I know, one though i think yeah. sunsetting is an inevitability it is yeah, it is it's got to come back at some point surely i i predict it will uh Tom, just, just don't, question, just don't do it to our one our I, one contentious question would you sunset exotics oh <laughs> yeah, I got probably. the response I like. I'm good. Wherever he goes probably. from there, I got the response I, I, I just like. I, The one thing I really don't want them to do is sunset armor. Only because Ooh. the way that you stat roll armor in this game is frustratingly <coughs> irritating when you get to like, you, you have 49 stat. And if you had 1.1 1 .1 more, you'd have, you know, 50 stat armor. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and stuff like that is, is super irritating. So like I have the perfect rolled stats on my armor. It's like... Right. It's like 90 mobility because I Titan skate. So, yeah. Um, and then I have like, you know, six resilience, 100 recovery, 100 intellect, and like whatever it is on strength. And so you have your sets that, and good. Nice. And that's, so I'm, yeah, I'm, it's all perfect. So, yep. Perfect. I'm with you on the armor because for me, as you said, right now your stats are good and I don't want to grind yeah. for another set of stats. So it's like if they ever do anything to armor, as we've kind of seen before with like Forsaken bringing in stats. For me to mm -hmm. care, I just want to care about armor again. And right now, I've kind of said this multiple times, I don't. Because once you get your stats, yeah. you don't need any. Like, I see a class item drop, and I'm like, why? I literally have one of each style yeah. masterwork. I never need to see a class item for the next five months. And unless Witch Queen yeah. does point. something That's different, like, there's no... So Honestly, it's like, the only reason why I keep not to cut you is just for the different element and the elemental so mods associated. That's all you need. You need four yeah. sets of armor. Right? Pretty and then much, now that's it. With the yep. trans even, mod, even that you're stuff, good. they kind of yeah, they kind of walked back a lot of that element. Like I remember, you had to have like void armor for like sniper and hand cannon and stuff. You don't need that anymore. Right. You know, like, yep. Now, now it's everything is elementally tied to mods. Yeah, that specific yeah. mods only will fall now. Even with stasis now, the new stasis yep. armor, like specific mods are tied to it. That that's their way of making you try to hold yeah. on. Yeah. That's and literally their way to you extend know, the grind. You know that's all. Yeah, yeah, you know what they'll do with armor. They won't sunset. Like I'm, I'm fairly sure of that because they know the way the community react. But what they mm -hmm. will do is they'll just bring in OP mods. They'll, mm -hmm. yep. they, they're only tied to that particular armor, and then you're like, okay, that's I need to what, get new armor. That, that's why yep. I see the stasis armor. I'm like, ah, I see what y'all doing. Okay, yeah. they up, they're making me forced to go grind this, this, this element of armor now. Yeah. When sunsetting that stasis... does come back, they'll call it. You know, the, it's just going to the destiny content vault. <laughs> <laughs> Because some of that stasis armor, you can get like in, even in PvP, you get an extra orb on your super mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. like, I don't, I don't think the PvP side of the community have quite got the builds stuff yes. like figured out compared to the PvE community. But I think in the coming months with Witch Queen, it's gonna it's gonna be super I agree. interesting. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we will see if Witch Queen brings anything else that we don't know about. Which, of course, we've got more to come, but. Glaives and legend difficulty campaigns. Crafting. Raid that's not against Sabathu. I forgot about glaives. Yep. Mm -hmm. crafting. Weapon crafting and all that stuff. That. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah, no doubt. So we no will doubt. see. But to allow our guest to kind of get off into the rest of yeah. his day and his weekend, we do want to let this man at least have the rest of his day. Um, we thank you, sir, for joining us today. I feel like this is a good place to wrap up. So um, is there anything else you wanted to discuss at this point? Or are we kind of, are you good? Because no, I know we, you don't get we, to we like you don't get to vent on Destiny all the time, so we're kind of we yeah. we we can be your outlet for that. So if you do, you <laughs> have I like, like I feel like we've I feel like we've gone through most stuff. Like yeah. I, I, yeah. the main thing I want Bungie to do is like like I said is really to bring 
like some of the creator creator community into into the game and i feel like that would be a good way to to really uplift the community a bit and then just to figure out their revenue situation just so that it's please it's just so we don't have to have like because i think if people knew that the game was ongoing and live they wouldn't necessarily be worried about like if they knew that after witch queen they wouldn't have to buy a dlc or whatever yeah then that's for this forsaken stuff you know wouldn't wouldn't be so bad so no yeah but i think we've gone through pretty much everything yeah yeah unless we want to talk about sunset in the game but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know you don't want to be here another hour there no <laughs> no yeah we, we've had those debates they were entertaining as well not yes. quite as not yeah. quite as vocal as some of the other debates but definitely a heated That's one a that was e that was us yeah, too that was, that was that, yeah. Kog and i just me, me and you were not friends for a little bit yeah. we, 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 we worked it out we worked through it you know what I'm <laughs> we got there the we got there you know the trials debate you know Travis but, but these, versus everybody these, de <laughs> these destiny debates that everyone has it's always funny watching the community flare up about something some things some things they're obviously right about but mm -hmm. i think for the most part like it, even the um the armor synth stuff like it, that stuff blew up but like it doesn't matter that much like mm -hmm. i feel like you you probably earn enough to be able to do it anyway right. unless you're like really into it so it's like i appreciate that bungie's like trying to make their money and they have some really sketchy ways they try and make it sometimes <laughs> it looks bad i, and... I appreciate the sketchiness of the money <laughs> <laughs> but like i feel like we have some questions i respect the hustle of <laughs> i respect the hustle sometimes like I don't <laughs> want a game where I'm paying twenty bucks a month to, to play. Oh, for sure, really. I'm, I'm so, okay with them. And and at the end of the day, like the the transmog is is cosmetic. It is so, like, what it cares. is. Yeah. But the main thing that I was mad about was three new currencies and oh, the whole classic. They, they, <laughs> yeah. classic I don't like that they pretended rate. like there was a way to do it without paying. Like they were like, yeah. oh yeah, no, it's super easy. All you have to do is play like eighty hours, and you'll get one yeah. piece of armor. I'm like, if, if, just if sell it to us. Just take it out and sell it to us. If this is how you're gonna be, you know. Yeah. If there's anything they could be, it's just a bit more transparent with the community for sure. Like for sure. It, for sure, that, for that, sure. That, those two years of like not really knowing what was going on with anti cheat is and, and PvP in general yeah. and maps. Yeah. It just highlights that. They need to be a bit more transparent in certain areas. Yeah. No doubt. Well, I got no two doubt. questions for you. One, what is your favorite cookie or biscuit? I guess I could say for you guys, right? Is that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is about Me, right. cookie. Mm. I'm not really a cookie fan. Like, I like, you know, like Oreos are great. And okay, stuff, there, you there, we go. Go. there we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, and then the other mm. one, uh, I'm going to steal Travis's thing. If you could ask Bungie for one thing going into Bungie, Witch please. Queen, yeah, what would be your Bungie please? <laughs> Hmm. Take Wither Horde out of PvP. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Wow. okay. Just, Ooh. just make it so that I don't just like, you know, act like sneeze on it and then I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I, like I don't that. know. Like th th there's there's so many things I'd want, but like some that 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 is a particularly frustrating thing in PvP at the moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, I that's bungee, bungee, my question. Bungie, please. That I that is supposed to be. It's supposed to be something really like pedantic. Just yeah. like a nitpick, like the that's a pretty so specific one. one. Yeah, that's a pretty yeah, specific yeah, I'll, one. I'll, I'll that's actually one. good. That's good. Yeah, that's that's I want twelve raids or something. Like, no, he's like, I want one gun out of PvP. He did what? That was good. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, I got my, my one big question. nitpick right now. My bungee please. That's just been on my mind forever. Has been the tower versus the helm and like yeah, 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 Zavala yeah, yeah. and Akora not being there, and it's just like mm -hmm. oh, that just yeah. it just. <laughs> <annoys me laughs> no, I agree. I hear you on that. I do have a question. Um, being that you are a raider. Your favorite raid? Ooh. Mm, All time. Last wish, to be honest. Ooh. Okay. Ooh, same. I see. Yeah. So I, I, why? Why, well, why last it, wish? It, it's got to be between last wish and vault of glass, but like obviously vault of glass when it was prior. Like it, it's great vault of glass now. But yeah. It was, it was kind of special then. Mm -hmm. Um, because vault of glass, yeah, was. That well, that was fun. But last wish was just talk like to me. Talk I, to I me about think last the wish. thing about raids and like we were talking about the difficulty and stuff. Yeah, raids really exposes whether you can follow basic, you know, mm -hmm. the things in the game and like follow your team and strategize mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it's just last wish was really particularly like lots of different mechanics you really had to mm -hmm. learn. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also that one guy who's like. 
you know when you know when you're in like an LFG, you, you know that you've done every role, so you can pretty much do whatever. And you're like, oh yeah, so who's gonna do plates or whatever? And then it it's like silence. And you're like, <laughs> all right, I'll do that. You know? yeah. <laughs> no, I'll do that. Like, Last wish is definitely that raid. I think the most yep. where like it exposes whether yes. people have actually learned that particular content or not. So mm-hmm. whereas I think I think Vogue. Not so much, but yeah, last wish, the mechanics in last wish. Like just, like I said earlier, the, the pure fact that no one actually does Riven. Yeah. Like yeah. you literally run into a wall, teleport, and then just blast it with whatever's the latest hot OP weapon. Yeah, OP weapon. Currently, yeah, fusion yeah. rifles, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that, that, yeah. that just shows. And that, and that is the Destiny community in a, in a nutshell, isn't it? Like anything that's cheesy. Yeah. Yeah, like they got the same with Vault of Glass. It's the community of efficiency. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah efficiency. I'm the same. I, I love the efficiency and I love the yeah. cheese. Yeah. No, I, I gotta shout you out because I, I do like I like the last wish choice. It doesn't get enough love. I love the the narrative connection, you know, yeah. from the story into the raid was beautifully done. Riven encounter, escaping with the heart was was amazing. Um I, and it was the first encounter raid to actually change. good. Yeah, that's the that's an actual good encounter. I know everybody uh, skips it, but the first time I completed, oh it, I yeah, it legit, and it's a great encounter. Mm-hmm. You were saying, and it, and it was the first raid that changed something in the in the game as well, right? Like yes, it opened the, up the, the strike the, and yes, the corrupt and then it, and um, mm. I always got a, an affinity for the Shurochi encounter. I don't know why the Shurochi just encounter the pure just chaos the speed. of all of it. The music is amazing and the, the speed yeah. just and elevating and getting on the plates. It's it's all it's a frenetic kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, salute salute to Last Wish. I, I just go there to finish my catalyst. Yeah. That's it. It's like <laughs> everybody right. just steals the thousand ads in there, just run into the door, kill them, <laughs> die, do it again. The greatest checkpoint yeah. in raid history. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that you can <laughs> literally go straight to it without cheating is awesome. No doubt. Also, prob- probably the best exotic uh, event. Thousand right? Voices. Thousand 1K, voices 1K so, yeah. is up there, bro. It's so, 1K it's is so up there. so unique and cool, and, and using it in Gambit was so toxic. I, well, I, it's I, back I now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I still yeah, don't have on, it. On so PC, when it first came out, it was tied to your frame rate, the amount of damage that you yep. did. Yep. So if you had like 200 frames, you would literally map the whole team in Gambit. It was insane. <laughs> I remember that. Oh, they yeah. didn't patch I, it for I, ages. I, Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I carried that thing in Gambit, and people I I probably that was probably the period of my life where I've gotten the most DMs on, a, on like a <laughs> Xbox. Oh, yeah. Like <laughs> every game, people would message me and just be like, "You are a monster!" Like you know, lot like the <laughs> I'm sure much account. worse. Were, yeah. yeah, I'm 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 obviously taking out the Xbox, but people were just like, "Dude, screw you!" Because I would just go in, I would just in, I was a constantly invading, invade, kill their whole team. <laughs> they kill their whole team just constantly. They could not stay alive. So upset. Hilarious. Oh. I love it. Ah, it's a good old yeah, I, yeah, I've got a lot of fun in this for Last Wish. Just Forsaken in general. That's salute. I, yeah. Salute. I hope they, they bring great. out an expansion that's like Forsaken that yeah. level. But I think they yeah. will. They'll get that big. It's just going to take them a while because they're going to have to home grow it, build it. Yeah. yeah. They go with a banger like year ten. The unknown one right now is like the mm. ultimate. Yeah, yeah, man. Good stuff. Well, that I would say definitely wraps everything up. Um, got a little extra out of you, so we appreciate that one. Uh, but yeah, at no. this point, I just want to thank you for being here, taking the time to join us. Thank you for the reschedule. Twice. All my fault. <laughs> and um, yeah, all the PC people appreciate and now can poke fun at me for a while. It's going to be a lot <laughs> of jokes, but it's totally fair. I can deal. I can laugh at it now because it's OK. Um, exactly. But at this point, I wanted to Thank kind of God. let you have the floor to kind of let everybody know if there's anything that you're looking forward to, anything that you do in articles on, any coverage, basically to tell everybody where to find you, what you're doing, what you like doing, all of those things. Uh, the time is yours. Yeah, I mean, I am following the Twitch hack quite a lot at the moment. That's been the uh, uh, this week has been insane because on Monday, Facebook yeah. was down. Tuesday, Windows 11 came out. And then Wednesday, Twitch got hacked. I'm like, I'm, I'm like sitting here doing this podcast. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> like, something must have happened, right? The podcast like, got hacked. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what's happened? Um, yeah. But yeah, like I, I, I pride it primarily focus on Microsoft and PC gaming um, and just PC stuff in general. So that's, that's kind of what I've always really focused on. Um, so I'm on Twitter at, at Tom Warren. Um, obviously, theverge.com, all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm trying to think what we have coming up. What you got going? What you got going? I don't know. Like, I, I feel like we just finished, like, like Techtober. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, there's obviously the Google event next week and mm-hmm. a lot of stuff, but like a lot of stuff for me personally with the Surface devices and all the Windows 11 stuff just wrapped up. So, yeah, you had a pretty busy to... couple of weeks there. 
Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been intense, but I think there's going to be interesting Xbox stuff, Halo Infinite mm-hmm. previews and reviews stuff's coming up. I played a bunch of that beta and like. It's really weird, like getting used to the, the time to kill and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Well, you played Destiny, right? Yeah, yeah. but you forget. Um, and and obviously not being able to ADS with half the weapons, really, because you get popped out of it half the time. Um, mm-hmm. Do you need so to like, though? When you have no, not really. Recoil. Yeah, yeah, and it, and you basically have like no range drop off on half the weapons either. So mm-hmm. it's okay. uh, yeah, a bit but a lot of fun that was. So I I I think leading up to that, I think I thought the campaign was gonna suck, but now I think I. I think it's going to be okay. Like if, if it, the game feels pretty good, so. yeah, definitely. And then the is coming out as well. Yeah, yeah, Big that's going to be like. I get my 4K monitor like at a... the end of this month, and I can actually experience all up. the glory. Yes, you yes. said Forza. Forza Horizon Five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh my god. That's going to be like a tech, technical show showcase. Oh yeah, playground. Yeah. Playground is out here. Stunning. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. man? Goats. Yeah. 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 So I'm looking forward to all that. Like that's like that's going to be the next sort of few weeks or. Couple of months for me, really. So. Yeah, it's like I know Halo's big, I know Fours is big, but it's like, you know, COD Battlefield looking kind of shaky. I feel like almost might need a delay depending on how that one's playing right now. It's unless it's just an yeah. old build. Like I don't know if this month is going to be enough for them, but it is weird to go into like Call of Duty Vanguard. Don't really care. Halo's big, but it's in December. But it's like this October November. I know October has a lot of things coming, but the giant Mm -hmm. games actually aren't quite there. I feel like a lot of them have been pushed a little bit, but there's still a lot to play. Like this week had like Far Cry and other things. Then you had Kena just a little while ago that I just finished up and you've got, you know, it's been remastered. Yep. I've got actually, I've got to actually play that. that I need to jump on that. So it's like, there's a lot to do. But it's just Everyone's not like the, playing New World, though, right? New World, yeah. yeah. And I've been buried yeah. in ninety hours of tree chopping, so you know. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> I refuse. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm avoiding too. it at the moment. I'm avoiding it. Yeah. It's one I'm of those. It's going to blow my PC up as well. So it's still, I will say, go go happen. into like your NVIDIA settings, cap your frame rate, those types of things. Yeah. Like I've done that already. Like because the biggest thing, if you because I I don't have my hundred high frame rate monitor right now, so I wouldn't push it as right. hard. It's only sixty. But yeah, you can yeah. probably play at 60 and be okay. Don't need to go too crazy. But um, no. yeah, it's one of those things like I haven't played World of Warcraft in so long. So finally coming in and doing this was like there is some kind of satisfaction to what you're doing, seeing the numbers go up and that type of thing. And I haven't done even the big PvP yeah. stuff. And I don't know how long it'll last. It's 40 bucks one time, no subscription. So again, I don't know what else is coming, but it's. It is fun for me in a weird way. I just can't explain it to other people. Like, should I is should I buy this? Do you like it? I'm like, I do. I have this weird satisfaction out of it, but I cannot tell you if you're gonna like it because it is not for everybody, but it is fun. Yeah. But yeah, like like you said, Battlefield and Call of Duty. Yeah. Like I'm not not that interested in either. This Halo this, picks yeah. a great year to come out. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. things are aligning for Halo, it feels. Yep. Yeah, and it's like free, this, right? So yeah, free to play multi. Let's hope it just doesn't get hacked to death. And yeah, game yeah that'll be the question. Got a lot of things going for him, for sure. Because just can't wait to play it. the campaign. Yes, yeah, see what that, that's huge. That's campaigns. the huge question mark. Yeah, campaigns. <laughs> Plural, because it's an yeah. living, they, evolving they, campaign yeah. of ten years. Well, there's at least there's at least two campaigns in this first. Uh, but are you mm-hmm. gonna are you gonna wait for co-op or are you gonna? Like, cause no. you, can't, you can't wait. No, I'm right? not waiting. Yeah, no. I'm not waiting. No, I mean, I, yeah. honestly, I'm glad that co op isn't around at the beginning because I prefer to have like my own meditative solo journey. And then once I'm done, then I'll bring in my friends. Are and you trying to force kill him right now? Inter- What's happening? <laughs> and interrupt. You know what I mean? I was the, doing the, so the good avoiding an argument with him today. And then he does this. <laughs> I was doing so good, and then he does this. <laughs> I love playing co-op campaigns, but I I never feel like I get the full story experience with my friends chatting in my ear and stuff like that. And yeah, of course, you could always choose to play offline, but then your friends hit you up. They're super annoying. They're like, "Yo, why are you playing solo campaign? Hop in with us!" And I'm just like, "Dude, I just want to be able to play the campaign by myself once without anybody annoying me." And now that co-op isn't there at the beginning. I will have that opportunity. So personally, I'm kind of happy, but I get why people are upset. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I like playing it with a friend for sure. But thank you. Yeah. I, I think in a world no, capacity, I'd want to play it on my own and like yeah. really, you know, engrossed in the story and not miss mm-hmm. a beat. But like, yeah, it is. Yeah. Co-op's just a Halo thing, man. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm I just a fan I, I like of. It too. I'm not saying I don't like Ooh. the co-op. No. Of course, no, but I'm you did say it. you like I'm that gonna, it doesn't exist there. At the beginning, <laughs> at the beginning, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna play you did say solo. that, sir. I'm gonna play it solo, and then when the co-op comes out, I'm gonna play it again with all my friends, and I'm gonna have a great time. And I'm not gonna be worried about the story because I already did my solo playthrough. It's kind of perfect for me. I get, mm. I get it. Though. I get it. We'll see how it pans out. We'll see how it pans out. We'll see how it pans out. I just like that you know games drop, you know, launch with the features they've always launched with. For the history of the franchise. I just like that. It needs to be consistent, you know. G- game development is a lot different now. Oh, and yeah, let's yeah, not yeah, yeah. COVID, let's not Yeah, oh, no, like for sure, for sure. Stuff. That's why I've, I've always been a fan of uh, delay, but I'm not going to derail this because I want to move on. <laughs> you want to delay the game again? <laughs> oh, I, I've, I've been on team delay from from the beginning. If, if the features are not ready and they've already delayed it for a year... Could you imagine what it would have if we would have launched with the Series X? What we would have not picture what we would have been playing at that point. I don't even understand what that would have been. It just shows to me. But 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 there's a difference between like the game being incomplete or looking the way it did and all the problems that they had, Mm -hmm. and some features not being there right away and then being transparent about it. That's like like if if the game is fully ready except for co-op, I'd rather have it now and then them add co-op later than them to just delay it because of one feature that they're going to add. Two features, two features. Forge, Forge is the other feature. But Forge is almost never launched with Halo. When when is it ever like Halo? I think it launched maybe with Halo Three, but all the other ones that got added uh, again, it it just shows to me that more time is needed. That's what it just shows to me. But for, they, for features choos- that are non-crucial. They are they have existed throughout <laughs> the game, throughout the history of the franchise. So it just shows to me, it just shows to me that more t- development time is needed, but they are choosing to meet their Halo anniversary and the things associated with it. And I get it. Yeah, there's a, a, there's a, get somebody it. financially going, you have to release this in 2021. I'm yeah, surprised I still feel like that that's you true. think that they need more time to develop it if you've played the beta or the preview, because that game does not need more time. It's that's like a, the a, multiplayer the, component. The, the, yeah, but the thing that they showed last year, okay, my, it obviously looked rough. And 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 the screenshots they released, I can't believe they released those screenshots. Yeah, that was that was pretty crazy. Yeah, but like at the end of the day, none of that stuff really matters. I'm like a big graphics guy and all that sort of stuff. Me too. It's the way the way the care. game plays, right? Oh, the like, game plays it, fun. It, it yes. looks great, and the, yeah. the campaign. Everything I saw was like, dude, I want to play this game. And then afterward, uh, I went online playing... and I saw everybody was mad about graphics, and I was like, I didn't even notice. To be honest, no, with you. I'm, I'm with you there. The I'm with run. you there. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you there. When I, when I saw the initial, I just thought it looked fun and it played fun, and I thought the grappling hook. And all that yeah. stuff. Even with after people dissected it and saw Craig face and saw yeah. you know the the pop in at the top, I, that yeah, didn't yeah. bother me at all. You know, that's it. Yeah. I'm just I'm the fan of I rather the dev take their time and we know the history with Staten now um, being in charge and Lee going. It, it, it's clearly internal turmoil that it took to get this game. We we can't say that there hasn't been a struggle with the development of this game. And th- that's all I'm concerned. And, and to me, I'm always on the side of give the dev as much time as they need. And I'd rather have a great product. But again, I'm not jinxing the game. I'm going to play it when it comes out. I'm going to be right there with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm just always a fan of, hey, give the dev as much time as possible if, if needed. I think I think it's going to blow up as a multiplayer game for sure. Yeah. It sure. seems it's free. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it so far. And it's rumored like 20 maps or something crazy. Like, yeah. Really? Yeah. You guys don't think it's going to be dead in a month if it doesn't have a battle royale mode? <laughs> <laughs> I say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder yeah. if they took like the maps out of the PvP maps that Bungie like put in the content vault and just took them in. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Although those maps would not be good in Halo. Also, I don't think <laughs> Destiny's maps are particularly good, but well, that's true. That's a whole. That's a whole other topic. Yeah, whole that's other a whole other topic. Maps, forcing play styles. We can't get into another podcast. Anyway, that just means we'll have to yes. bring you back. That just yes, that, that means we'll have to bring back. you back and come back. Awesome. Uh, well, that was about a fifteen-minute outro for you, uh, Travis. What do you got coming up? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing stuff uh, on IGN as usual. I, I actually recently did a preview for uh, Grounded. Uh, they're doing a, um, a, they just announced an update called the Hot and Hazy update where they're changing a bunch of stuff about that game. And that doesn't sound like you're talking art. about the Grounded game anymore, but... <laughs> Hot days. Yeah. Hot and hazy. Right. Uh, they add they're but they're they're adding a bunch of like RPG uh mechanics to the game and making it more like a obsidian game that you would expect. <laughs> and uh and adding some new areas. So you can see my preview for that on IGN.com. Uh follow me on Twitter at Tiger Travis. I also do a um 
general video game talk show called Bitcast on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. Pacific, uh, right before the lords of the lords of gaming do their thing after football. I think. Is, yeah, yeah. Are you doing it at the same time? We're doing it at the same time. Do, do, the same time do, 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 I warned Ainsley. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll be moving out of the slot back to our normal time soon. It's Can't January. Oh, there, what? There's more than one podcast. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Actually, we have found that some people listen to both of our podcasts simultaneously. Yes, simultaneously. And are, in the, com- and are yeah. in the comment sections for both. And both. I'm like, you guys are crazy. <laughs> yes. There's no way you're what do you have? One ear pod in uh, you know, I've like, seen I got my headset on and my earbud in. Okay, I'm set. All right. <laughs> yeah, and my right. brain exploded. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you can find me there and uh also you can find me here talking about Destiny every week. How about you, Cog? No doubt. First of all, salute the legendary Tom Warren. Huge fan of you, brother. Um, yeah. Following you at journalistic career for a while. When E told me that you, you know, he reached out and you said yes, I was just blown away. Like, so uh, cool. Yeah, sure. yeah. Bro, so cool to have you here. Like I said, love your work. Love what you do in the uh, Windows and the Xbox community. That the, the news bits are great. So salute to you. And in fact, your Destiny fan just automatically makes you awesome automatically. So you're <laughs> in a, you're you're cemented as a legend now. But uh, yeah, man, at me at Lord Cognito on Twitter, Iron Lords Podcast. Every Sunday is the Lord's Day, eleven a.m. Eastern. Check that out. And for those who want a more Xbox centric, check me out. Uh, podcast. Check me out on Defining Duke when Mister Maddie plays. We've got uh, two episodes up when, uh, on the big team battle. We break it down uh, mm-hmm. to find a Duke Ultimate. We do, we kind of go down with that. And then this week, we kind of talked about uh, earlier about the TGS and everything going on with Microsoft's efforts in Japan and the latest news bits, man. And of course, LordsGaming.net, a little smaller site, not as big as The Verge, but you know, we, we got some people, <laughs> you know, <laughs> check us out. We uh, talked about the, uh, I believe, the uh, Pitchford uh, restructuring and stuff like that. But I uh, appreciate the support. And of course, that last word podcast with these two co-hosts of mine. One I want to strangle about Halo, but I'm going to refrain one, myself. One, one a previous <laughs> co-host, I believe. And now, I'm now a former co-host. Now you're former. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And After the, and pissing the... off E all episode for two episodes <laughs> straight, and now you, Cog, I think... Uh... I think I'm out good, of here. Bro, Travis bro. gets demoted, You're and all good. of a sudden his window gets smaller and smaller, and he just fades out of the tr- <laughs> out of the podcast. <laughs> you good, man? And of course, E, the survivor, the the, the PC survivor. Oh, no. Happy to have just you. Pray to What's the going PC, with you, thank bro. the PC gods that I'm with yes. you guys this week. Seriously, so mm-hmm. I will I will never understand and thank. However, the miracle of luck <laughs> that things did not happen that I expected because I was expecting the worst and seriously i had literally ordered a motherboard that afternoon and ended up sending it back so i mean it was yeah it was pure luck but yeah i will be uh chopping trees messing around on trials i've got some uh, my wife's family coming in this weekend so i probably won't be doing trials till monday i'll be a little off on that type of stuff but uh yeah for me you guys know what i'll be doing uh, i did get alan wake so i mean i've got that one to try and work through kind of a fun experience i'm looking forward to if i can peel myself nice. away from new world that's just one of those, there's so much to work on. Like, that's one of those weird games. You're like, hey, I want to make like an upgraded bag so I can carry more stuff. Well, okay, how I, do I make the upgraded bag? Okay, I need this like one thing. Well, if you want to buy it on the, the like, if you want to buy it in the trade area where you can do that one, it's already expensive. Okay, so how do I go find that myself? Well, I've got to level up this thing. So I'm running around picking up just hemp in this loop for hours and I'm like not even close to as high as I need to be. So no, it is a game that you can lose your whole life into if you choose. So we'll see if I can pull myself away, but I got to get some destiny in this weekend um, and got to get ready for the new difficulties and stuff coming up. But yeah, it's like, honestly, again, thank you, Tom. It was a pleasure. And yeah, no. believe me, it was um, yeah, kind of a shock that you said yes, but you've been ultra nice about the whole thing. And especially after last week, being a PC guy, I think you could empathize which worked well. Yeah, Somebody, I, I, I just, I just felt bad because you, you obviously followed a verge guide to installing Waterfall <laughs> in your PC. So I just felt bad. So I was like, oh, I have to come on. <laughs> Sorry, I almost lost my headset on that one. That, oh. that was great. Oh, way that to, great. yeah, way to. That's awesome. See, my pre-gaming of all the heckling, he was. You know, he saved. He saved, yeah, he saved the best. He saved the best one best for last. last right there. Just leave, just leave that one there. Oh, yeah, we leave beautiful. that one right there. Yeah, I'm yeah. just that. That one, that clip won't make it back out there. So, um, mm-hmm. but thank you so much for joining. This episode has been a blast. Thank you for letting us get the extended fun. time as well. Um, and we'll definitely have to have you back. But for this episode, yes. to my co-hosts, both of them, 
both Lord Cognito and Ty Guy Travis wouldn't be uh, enjoying this thing as much and uh, probably hurting in the cheeks after all the laughter this one. And Tom, thank you very much. Uh, but for this episode, mm. it has been a long one, but it has been a great one. So number 168, October 8th, for this episode, it has been... The Last, the last Word. word.